Hello, everybody, and welcome into Ray Fisher Stadium here at the Wilpon Baseball Softball Complex on the campus of the University of Michigan for WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan Baseball. I'm Austin Falco, alongside me, Owen Swanson, bringing you the third game of three game series between the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and the University of Michigan Wolverines. Michigan going for the sweep today after a dominant first two games of the series. Yeah, Michigan getting the win on Friday, 8 to 3, and then yesterday, 10 to 1, with Tommy Henry on the mound. Uh, a three-run homer from Joe Donovan was enough as Michigan looked really dominant in these first two games and going for the sweep today with uh, Jeff Criswell taking on the bump. Jeff Criswell will be on the mound for the Wolverines today. He's making his 11th start of the season. He's 4-1 with a 2.82 ERA. He's thrown 51 innings this season, struck out 56 batters, only walked 27, and hitters hit 239 against the sophomore right-hander for the Wolverines. The lineup he'll face for Rutgers is as follows. Mike Neister leads off and plays left field. Kevin Welsh is the shortstop, batting second. Batting third, the designated hitter Tim Desi. Chris Brito plays first base. He bats in the cleanup spot. The catcher, Tyler McNamara, bats fifth. Batting sixth, playing center field, Victor Valderrama. Carmen Sclafani is at third base. He's batting seventh. Kevin Blum in the eight hole plays right field. And rounding out the lineup is David Soto, the second baseman for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights on what is a beautiful Sunday here at Ray Fisher Stadium. Absolutely, and Michigan wearing those nice looking white throwback uniforms, love to see it. Absolutely gorgeous throwbacks for Michigan today. They're wearing them on Sundays all season long. It's a little off-white color. Michigan across the chest in blue with the numbers on the front and back in blue. Maze piping on them. Everybody with the high socks and stirrups with the stripes on the stirrups. It absolutely gorgeous look for Michigan today. And of course, it's all topped off with the signature blue cap with the big Maze Block M on it. Mike Neister steps to the plate against Chris Well, ready to start things off here. Chris Well winds up the first pitch. Hit in the air towards center field. Going back is Jordan Brewer. He's going to have room and he makes the grab. One pitch, one out to start the ball game here. Nice start to the game for Chris Well. Not going to have to worry about his pitch count here <laughs> right away. That will bring up Kevin Welsh, the shortstop for Rutgers today. Welsh coming in batting 228. Got himself a 356 on base percentage as well. Seven extra base hits on the season for the junior switch hitter batting from the left side against the righty Chris Well. First pitch is fastball strike. It's 0-1. Chris Roll immediately back on the mound, gets his sign, takes a breath, and now the 0-1 pitch. Hit in the air towards center again. This one a little more towards right center. Jordan Brewer going back now, makes the grab for out number two. And Chris Roll giving up some hard contact here early, but I don't think he minds. He seems to be piping the ball into the zone with, uh, with Heat trying to really get contact and just get outs. That'll bring up Tim Desi, the designated hitter today in the three hole. We'll see if he's a little more patient than the first two batters of this game. First pitch fly out to start things off, and then a second pitch fly out for the second out of the inning. Right handed hitting Desi. Open stands in that right handed batter's box. Crystal takes a breath, winds up. First pitch to the at bat, fouled back to the screen, 0 and 1. And again, Chris Wall going right after the hitter, not wasting any time. Attacking the zone here early on is Jeff Criswell. Criswell for the Wolverines, the six foot four, two hundred twenty-five pounder out of Portage, Michigan. Winds up with the hands over the head. Pipes one in there that's fouled off to the right side. Jimmy Kerr gives chase over near the wall, but that one's going to get out of play, and he'll watch it. Bounce up off the concrete, so the count moves to 0-2 now on Desi. Chris Rowe, you have to throw a ball here early on through six pitches, or rather five pitches. Six pitch about to come here to Desi. Once Desi steps back in the box, he does now. Chris Rowe's back on the mound, pitching from the third base side of the rubber. Winds up, 0-2. Fastball misses high. Maybe a breaking ball that didn't break. The count goes to one ball and two strikes.
Chris Rowe, every time he gets the ball, kind of tosses his arm out in front of him. Loosens up a bit. The one-two pitch is hit high on the infield. Over there is Blomgren and Thomas. Blomgren calls him off right in front of the second base bag and makes the catch for out number three. So one, two, three inning to start things off here for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. After a half inning of play, it's Rutgers zero, Michigan coming up here on WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan baseball. And that's exactly what you want to see from your uh, from your starter, especially when it's not necessarily your best starters getting, making quick work of the opposing hitters, going right, going right after them, letting his defense go to work behind him. A really smarter approach in this uh, final game of the three-game set. You mentioned not necessarily the best starter for the Wolverines. It's kind of hard to say the Wolverines have any sort of weak spot in this starting rotation with the likes of Kyle Kaufman, Tommy Henry, and Jeff Criswell all going out there and pitching well, it seems, on a weekly basis. All three have ERAs of 282 or lower. Criswell's at 282 is the high mark of the three-man starting rotation Michigan has. And There's an argument to be made that Criswell is really one of the hotter pitchers right now. Last week against Northwestern, got the win to move to four and one, pitched five in a third inning, only gave up one run. The issue there was he walked five in that outing. The control was a little bit off. Hit a couple batters as well, but ultimately he was able to scatter that and only allow four hits to hold the Wildcats down in what ended up being a 10 to one victory for the Wolverines. Michigan going for the sweep today, as you mentioned. 8-3 was the final score on Friday. 10-1 to one was the final score yesterday. And they're going to send the following lineup to the plate to try to get the sweep today. Jordan Wogu leads off and plays left field. Designated hitter Jesse Franklin is in the two-hole. Jordan Brewer bats third and plays center. Jimmy Kerr is the first baseman in the cleanup spot. Batting fifth is the shortstop Jack Blomgren. Joe Donovan is behind the plate. He bats sixth. Batting seventh playing third base is Blake Nelson. Miles Lewis plays right field and bats in the eighth spot. And then rounding out the lineup for Michigan, Akeo Thomas playing second base. They'll go up against Tevin Murray, the left-handed throwing junior for Rutgers, making his ninth start of the year. He's 3-3 three three with a 3-18 ERA. Pitched in 45 and a third innings thus far. Walk, or rather struck out 58, walked just 22. Opponents hit a measly 214 against the big lefty. He winds up and fires a first pitch outside to Jordan Wilgu to start things here in the bottom half of the first inning. Even though that ERA doesn't look too bad for Murray, that the whip pretty high above the 1.0 mark, so he's letting on a lot, a lot of runners. Second pitch of the at-bat misses outside, and Wilgu's ahead in the count 2-0. and You mentioned that whip 1.31 for Murray. Leadoff hitters also hit 348 against Murray in any given inning. He winds up 2-0 pitch. And letting a lot of men on it, and that's low for a ball, excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> All good. Le letting a lot of men on, especially leadoff man, is not a recipe for success when you're just trying to keep your runs low and not a lot guy who walks a lot, so. 3-0 pitch in the dirt, ball four. Four <laughs> pitch walk to start things off. And as I say that, he gives up a walk to Woger to lead things off. But right on cue. Once again, get, letting that leadoff runner on. Not a, good, not a good sign for Murray to start the game. Especially the speedy Wogu over there at first base now. Jesse Franklin makes his way to the plate. To Jimi Hendrix all along the watchtower. Coming back from injury this weekend was Jesse Franklin. He's been in the DH spot all weekend long. First pitch to him, lefty to lefty. He's a fastball that... Is a strike right at the belt. Looks like he took a second, did home plate umpire Timothy Catton to decide whether that was a strike or not. Keeping an eye on Wogu over there is Murray, and he steps off the rubber. Forces Wogu to run back to the bag. Wogu 10 for 12 on solo base attempts this season. We'll see if Eric Backage gets aggressive here. Jesse Franklin at the plate, guy who gets on base a ton for the Wolverines, 388 on base percentage, despite just a 239 average. 
Coming set now, 0-1 pitch to Franklin. Big breaking ball, swing and a miss. Counts 0-2 now. Franklin out in front of that breaking ball. Trying to put that one to the patrons walking towards alumni field over the right field wall. Murray stares in, now comes set right at the belt. 0-2 pitch, Boku fakes going, and Jesse Franklin just sticks the bat out and fouls it over the screen and back to their left side, out of play. Count remain 0-2. And not a great pitch to chase with the no 2 count there. Probably could have let that one go and get back into it, but probably just protecting and not trying to get struck out here. But chasing those bad pitches 0-2 with a runner on first is an easy recipe for double play, so... Wogu goes on the pitch. The 0-2 pitch it high and deep towards left field. It's hooking near the corner, and it gets foul into the bullpen. Count's going to remain 0-2. Michigan, a little hit and run action there going on 0-2. Not something you see a whole lot of. Maybe not a true hit and run, knowing that Franklin was going to have to swing at any sort of strike, but didn't necessarily have to chase a ball, I don't think, in that situation. Yeah, as you normally on. do in a hit and run. Before the 0-2, pickoff throw. Almost gets past Brito at first base, but he scoops it out of the dirt. It's kind of funny looking at that combo down on first base, Brito and Wogu. Normally your first base when you think of these big, tall guys, but Wogu trumps Brito over there. Absolutely. That might be one of the shorter first <laughs> baseman I've seen in college baseball. But Brito doesn't matter if you get the job done. Brito stands at 6-2, but doesn't look like it from up over here. Wow. 0-2 pitch. Fastball just off the outside corner for ball one. And that one was close. Wow. I think that one caught the outside corner personally yeah. from up here. It looked like it did, but maybe fooled by Tyler McNamara behind the plate. He was set up off that outside corner. So kind of go to 1-2 and two now on Franklin. The defensive alignment for Rutgers in a second here as Franklin swings and misses at a breaking ball. Strike three. He'll go down for the first out of the inning. So one gone, one on for Jordan Brewer stepping up to the plate, who's homered in each of the first two games of this series. Defensive alignment for Rutgers across the outfield. Mike Neister, Victor Valderrama, and Kevin Blum on the infield. Going left to right, Carmen Sclafani, Kevin Welsh. The second baseman, David Soto, today. And as we've mentioned, Chris Brito's at first. Tyler McNamara behind the plate for Tevin Murray. First pitch to the at-bat to Brewer is low for ball, 1-0. and And Wogu really thinking about going or just trying to distract Murray here, dancing around off of first. Looked like he had a good jump when he did go on the Jesse Franklin at-bat. He is dancing over there. Not going on this pitch as it was spiked in the dirt. And the count will go to 2-0. Oh. Maybe a little distraction working here from Wogo. Murray is yet to throw a strike to a right-handed hitter. He walked Wogu on four pitches and now is down 2-0 oh on Jordan Brewer. Pick off throw chases Wogu back sliding. He's safe over there at first base. Jordan Brewer coming into this game batting 377 on the season. Leads the Wolverines in that category. Leads the Wolverines in home runs. Now he retook the lead from Jesse Franklin this weekend. And he swings and misses that ball that almost hits him in the knee. Looked like half of a protect swing and half of trying to golf one out. And again, not a place where you should be trying where you should be worrying about trying to chase a ball, especially up in the count like this. Don't want to ground into a double play. Let, we, let Rutgers off easy. To be fair, very good pitch from Murray. Kind of started off over the plate and broke down near the knee of Brewer. As before with the 2-1 pitch, we're going to get another pickoff throw. Rogu slides back in well ahead of the throw. Brewer leads the Wolverines in plenty of offensive categories. You mentioned average. Leads him in slugging, RBIs, home runs, stolen bases. And he fouls one back to the screen here on 2-1. and one. To make the count two and two. Looked like he tried to go the other way with that pitch on the outside part of the plate and just didn't quite get enough of it. Oh, 
Will be the big right-handed hitter for Michigan going against the left-hander, Murray. Murray comes set. Wogu not going here. He fakes it. The breaking ball misses outside. And the count's going to run full, three and two. And that one just started too far out off over the plate and didn't quite break enough. Seemed. Tried to go with the backdoor breaking ball against Brewer, but nothing going. So we'll wait for the payoff pitch after a pickoff throw. Once again, Wogu slides back in well ahead of the throw. No tag. Even bother to be applied by Brito. Rutgers, and they're all blacks today. Black tops, black bottoms. Wogu going on the 3-2 pitch. Swing and miss from Brewer. Throw it on the second. It's going to be not in time as Wogu slides in safely. So strikeout here by Brewer at the plate. Makes it two outs in the inning, but a stolen base by Wogu puts him in a scoring position with two gone for Jimmy Kerr. And a good jump by Wogu. Not a great one necessarily, but a good one. And he that speed really carries him. So two straight strikeouts here from Murray after walking Wogu on four pitches. And now very close to making his way out of the inning. Kerr the lefty against the lefty Murray. It's an area where Kerr has struggled a bit. He's in these lefty-lefty mashups. First pitch to him off the end of the bat down the left field line. That one is going to get out of play. Counts 0-1 now on the Wolverine first baseman. Kerr coming into this game, 279 in the batting average department. 368 is his on-base percentage. He's been clutch this season for the Wolverines, batting 320 with two outs in an inning and 286 with runners in scoring position. Why he has 32 RBIs tied for second on the team. Takes an 0-1 pitch outside for a ball. Evens the count up at one ball and one strike. Murray having trouble beginning his breaking ball to break back out over the plate. Starting it inside to lefties and outside to righties, and it's just not coming back to for a strike. He doesn't seem to have that real good movement on it yet, or really have control of that movement quite yet today. Fires a fastball that misses high and runs the count to two balls, one strike. Franklin taps the dish, now waves his bat a couple times over the plate. Murray still staring in for the sign. He crouches down, puts that glove on his right knee, and the ball behind his back now comes set at the belt. 2-1 pitch in on the hands of Kerr and foul off to the left side out of play. Counts even up at 2-2 two two now. A lot of deep counts for the Wolverines today, already making Murray throw 20 pitches in this inning. Next will be 21. Compare that to just the 7 that Chris Well threw in the top half of this inning. Yeah, and Michigan doing a good job of fighting off pitches that are close. Not necessarily the most patient approach which, uh, with uh, taking pitches, but certainly keeping, staying in counts. 2-2 two -two count. Breaking ball in on the hands. Hit towards left field. This one is going to be caught out there by Neister. Came running in. Wind, I think, held that ball up just a bit. Running in, or it's blowing in from right field. Looked like it had a chance to drop potentially, but it did not, so... Here in the bottom of the first, Michigan does not score on no hits, no errors. One man left on base for the Wolverines that inning. After one inning of play, the score remains Rutgers 0, Michigan 0. You're listening to the official student radio broadcast from Michigan Baseball here on WCBN Sports. Bark at the park day here at Michigan Baseball. Dogs all around that section one on the first base side. We have a dog rescue going on down that direction also. A lot of families, a lot of teams it looks like coming out to the ball game today as well. Great day to be here at Ray Fisher Stadium. Sunny, blue skies, not many clouds in the sky at all. Temperature's a little bit Chillier than you'd expect, looking at a picture, perhaps, of this ball game. But 50 degrees, not too shabby, especially when we can't really feel the wind too much up here. Yeah, out of the wind, it's a great, absolutely great day. And uh, as long as you're in the sun, it, it's bearable. It's nice. Great day to bring the dogs out, for sure. 
Love seeing all these dogs meeting each other for the first time, jumping up on one another. Here's some barks every once in a while also. You gotta wonder if that's, how, is, how distracting is that as a player? You're up at the plate maybe, you get, somehow we haven't heard any like real loud barks or anything like that. Yeah. Where it would seem to be distracting, but. Yeah, I haven't heard any noises that would be truly distracting, but I want, do wonder if a loud bark in a player, a while player is concentrating is almost akin to a yell during a golfer's backswing. Chris Wells is ready to start the top half of the second inning. He fires a first pitch fastball in there for a strike against Chris Brito, first baseman for Rutgers. Brito's coming into today, batting 241 on the season. Wind up, 0 1 pitch. Outside for a ball, 1 on 1's the count now. And besides the earned run average, a lot of stats kind of similar for Chris Wall to uh, his counterpart, Murray, today, especially with the whip and leadoff batters getting on at a high clip. 1 1 pitch. Swing and a miss there from Brito. Looked like it might have been a change up out of the hand of Chris Wall there. And the count's 1 and 2 now. Rito 6'2", 215, the freshman out of Perth, Amboy, New Jersey. 1-2 pitch on the way from Chriswell. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Chriswell gets his first strike out of the day, and there's one out here in the second. And Chriswell's been good for about a strikeout and ending this season, so only makes sense we see him set one down here in the second. That, that way. He didn't strike out a guy in the first inning, though, so maybe he has to make up for it here. A little behind schedule. Yep. <laughs> Hard to really knock a guy, though, when he gets out of the first inning on seven pitches. Yeah, absolutely. First pitch of this at-bat to Tyler McNamara. Misses inside with the fastball. McNamara putting his hands up over his head and getting out of the way. Count goes to one ball and no strikes on the backstop for Rutgers. McNamara comes in 248 in the batting average department. So the 1-0 pitch is bounced towards third. Fielding over there is Nelson. He makes a strong throw to first for out number two. And the sure hands of Nelson have been pretty reliable at third this season. Just another display of that there. He had some problems early in the season at second base, but for the most part when he's playing third, he's looked very comfortable. Made a couple sterling defensive plays on Friday along with his counterpart, Carmen Sclafani. He's on the on-deck circle. Victor Valderrama is at the plate right now, though, the center fielder. Another right-handed hitter for Rutgers. This entire lineup, save one hitter, bats on the right side. First pitch fastball on the outside corner, 0-1 oh, the count. A lot of youth in this Rutgers lineup as well. Two seniors, one was McNamara who just hit, one Sclafani on deck. As this 0-1 pitch is bounced towards short, Blomgren makes the play fairly easily and throws on to first for out number three. So another quick inning there from Chris Well, just eight pitches that time. So he's he's progressing a little bit now. Yeah. But one, two, three, nonetheless. Rutgers, no runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. Chris Wells cruising, and we head to the bottom of the second. Still tied at zero between Rutgers and Michigan. Here on the official student radio broadcast from Michigan Baseball, you're listening to WCBN Sports. Yeah, and strikeouts are cool, but not the most efficient thing. So I can't see Chris Wall complaining about the way he's gotten off to his start today. I'm sure he wants to stand for as long as possible. And made the joke about regressing here with eight pitches in that inning. One thing he did do better was get balls on the ground that time around. Yeah, a lot less hard contact to the outfield, which we saw the first two batters make uh, in the uh, top of the first, rather. So... So definitely an improvement, uh, maybe not in the pitch count department, but everywhere else, certainly. We'll see if Tevin Murray can be slightly more efficient this inning. 21 pitches in that last, and then that top of the, bottom of the first, rather. He'll face the five, or there's six, seven, or five, six, and seven hitters in the Wolverine lineup, Blomgren, Donovan, and Nelson. When it comes to this Michigan lineup, you never really have an easy stretch for anyone, uh, for any sort of inning. You're looking at any time someone's coming up to bat, uh, you got two guys behind them that are just as intimidating. Uh, the guys in front of them are just as intimidating. Uh, I mean, Blake Nelson's batting 342. He's down in the seven hole today. 
certainly deep and impressive. And the Wolverines currently have f uh, five hitters that are hitting above 300 in the lineup. So it really speaks to their depth. One of those ones that's not hitting over 300 at the moment is Jack Blomgren. He takes a first pitch for a ball that missed inside after he squared around a bunt. Not batting 300, but he's at 297. Pretty dang close there. And his on-base percentage all the way up over 400 at 413 as well. Exactly. And so even where the batting average lags behind, players are still getting on. Break, breaking ball there on 1-0 is swung on and missed for a strike. It's 1-1. Perhaps Murray finding that breaking ball a little bit here. That was a very good one. The Blomgren had a lot of good downward movement specifically on it. Looks in for the sign. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fastball bounces in the dirt. Count goes to 2-1. and one. Blomgren, the sophomore out of Milton, Wisconsin. Starting at shortstop for the second straight season for Michigan. He's played and started in all 41 games thus far and make it 42 with today's ball game. As the 2-1 pitch missed outside and runs the count to three balls in one strike. It's in firm control here as Murray winds up. And fire swung on and missed. Looked like he went off speed again and had Blomgren way out in front. The count's full. That one seemed kind of up as well. Probably would have been hard to make contact even if it had been timed properly. The swing, that is. I think Blomgren was thinking about home run number three on the season there. As the 3-2 pitch is called. Strike three on the inside corner at the knees. Blomgren took a couple steps towards first base before having to turn around and head back to the dugout. That's three strikeouts now in the day for Murray, and there's one out in the second. And I didn't have the best view of that, but it certainly seemed like it, it might have been kind of a borderline strike call there, a little bit low and in. Let's see if that's a trend here from Timothy Cat, and we've seen some umpires develop those trends of calling a little bit off the inside corners or outside corners. As Joe Donovan steps to the plate for Michigan, the... Starting catcher takes a first pitch breaking ball for strike one. Real good breaking ball yeah, there. Yeah, and that's definitely the best ball that Murray has thrown today. Really sharp break on that, on that ball and late action too. He's in the zone now working quickly. 0-1 pitch, fastball called, strike two. And we'll see if Murray really starts to settle in here. That He and Criswell are trending the opposite directions in terms of pitch count, but if he can get into a groove here, it may not matter. Puts that glove in front of his face. Now winds up with the glove down near his belt. 0-2 pitch, breaking ball, tapped towards third. Scalfani makes the play right by the line. Throws on the first, one to hop, and out over there at first base is Donovan. Good play on the run there from Scalfani. Gave Brito a long hop to be able to field that one and keep his foot on the bag for out number two. And a good job adjusting to the ball as well by Scalfani there because the ball kind of landed on the fringe between the turf and the green turf and the brown turf rather and Bounced off in one direction slightly, so good play there on the move. Blake Nelson steps up two gone in the inning. Mentioned Nelson batting 342 on the season. First pitch to him is a fastball right at the belt, strike one. Twelve ring hitters don't look comfortable right now against Murray at all. Yeah, a lot of check swings, a few bad chases. Seems like the uh, borderline calls are throwing them off a little bit. Breaking ball on 0-1, misses low. Skips away a little bit from McNamara, but no one on base, so it ultimately doesn't matter. The count's going to run to one ball and one strike. Winding up now, 1-1 pitch from Murray. Foul down the right field line. That'll get into the bullpen. And the count goes to 1-2 and two now. Murray's had two strikes on every hitter this inning for Michigan. And really, almost every hitter of the ball game, only one he didn't have two strikes on at some point was Wogu, who he walked on four pitches to start the ball game, or start his ball game rather. One and two pitch, fastball called, strike three. Two more strikeouts that inning for Murray. He's got four on the day. Michigan goes down, no runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. One, two, three inning, and we'll head to the third. Still tied up, zero, zero, between the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and the Michigan Wolverines. You're listening to WCBN Sports broadcast. Of Michigan baseball, Austin Falco and Owen Swanson bringing you the action in the third game of this three-game series. 
And Tevin Murray coming into today had 58 strikeouts and 45 in a third innings. So it kind of makes sense he's starting to get into a bit of a groove here and, and strike some Michigan hitters out. Only took a few innings for him to settle in. Got an early pitcher's duel through two innings. I mean, it's easy to say it's a pitcher's duel when you got zeros on the scoreboard, but there's almost a feel to it as well. You can tell both these pitchers locked in right now. Yeah, absolutely. They're not just making uh, good plays on these hitters. They're making quick work of them, or good pitches on these hitters, rather. They're making quick work of them uh, to pitch efficiently. At least Chriswell certainly is, and Murray is starting to settle in and, and pitch that way. So it looks like we have the makings of what could be a tight game all the way towards the end. Never got you the Michigan defensive alignment. Chris was working so fast, it seems like not to really matter too much or not giving us a chance to put that in there. Across the outfield for Michigan today, Jordan Wogu, Jordan Brewer, and Miles Lewis. Across the infield, it's Blake Nelson and Jack Blomgren on the left side. Akela Thomas and Jimmy Kerr on the right side. Joe Donovan's behind the plate for Jeff Criswell. Carmen Sclafani is going to lead off things here in the third. The bottom third of this Rutgers order is due up. Seven, eight, and nine hitters. Chris Wells made quick work of the first six guys in the order. Takes a breath. Winds up now. First pitch to Sclafani. Fouled back behind the screen and just can get over our heads. Counts 0-1. So close to getting one in the booth over here. I'm just I know. waiting for one. One of these days. I said that's my one mission this season is to grab one of these. <laughs> Better be prepared to <laughs> leap forward for that. Dive out the one. You got you to lay out for it. Absolutely. 0-1 pitch misses low and away. Counts 1-1 one and one now. Yeah, the chances of a ball being fouled perfectly into this window, not <laughs> high. The chances of you reaching out and grabbing one by the arm's length, a little better. Yeah. We had one really close last weekend. or I believe it was... Uh, not last weekend, but last week. See, the 0-1 pitch is hit high in the air towards the right side. Kerr's giving chase. Thomas giving chase. Lewis giving chase. It'll be Kerr, the first baseman, in what would be the outfield grass, making the grab for out number one. We had one. Uh, I was calling the game with Max Brill a couple weeks ago, or last week. I don't remember exactly what time frame <laughs> is in there anymore, but we were a couple spots down in this press box and had one bounce right off the railing just next to us couldn't have missed us by more than four feet wow i was ready to just leap out and grab one out the, out the window there but if i'm being honest disappointed that's probably your best chance all that, that, that probably was <laughs> I, I knew it as soon as it happened <laughs> kevin blum steps in and takes the first pitch outside from chris well counts one and oh chris well just his cap now gets back on the mound, winds up in the 1-0 pitch. Fastball misses low there. Counts 2-0. First two-ball count Chris Fells had all day. And maybe these Rutgers hitters are setting, settling in a little bit as well. If they start to play a bit more, uh, to take a few more pitches and be a little bit more patient, that could bode well for Rutgers as, as a whole. 2-0 pitch now on its way. It's a fastball called. Strike on the inside corner. Counts 2-1 now on Blum. Blum, the right fielder for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights today, is a redshirt junior out of Tom's River, New Jersey. Home of Todd Frazier. There you go. And the 1990-something World Series, call uh, Little League World Series champions. 2-1 <laughs> pitch misses outside. Count goes to 3-1 and one now. I struggle to remember what year it was, but it gets mentioned a lot. Every time Todd Frazier's up, yeah. yeah. You get the pictures of, uh, what was it, Todd Frazier and Derek Jeter, I think there yeah, was the oh, picture of it. They brought the Toms River team to Yankee Stadium. We've got to hear about it every time. 3-1 <laughs> pitch misses. Low and in for a ball. Rutgers gets their first runner on today with the rock with one gone here in the third. And we'll head to David Soto now striding up to the plate. Soto, a... Freshman out of Brentwood, New York. Batting just 117 on the season. Struggling in his inaugural campaign for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Wouldn't be surprised to see him square around for a bunt here given those offensive struggles. Nelson in Michigan think so as he's creeping in a bit on the pitch over at third base. Kerr holding the runner on big lead over there at first base. Griswold just holding on the mound, now fires, runners going, pitch misses inside, thrown on second base is 
in time. Great play by Donovan there. Had to make a tough catch on the ball that really ran inside and nearly hitting the hit, hitting the hitter Soto, and made a strong, accurate throw low to Blomgren, who just made a nice tag. A resident Nick Hornberg piping in here. It was the 1998 Little League World Series. Thank you, Mr. Hornberg. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Our fact checker, resident fact checker, Nick Hornberg. We're going to go to you for every stat we need, every trivial fact we need. First pitch, or rather second pitch strike here to David Soto. Even the cop at 1-1. We need to bunts off the table now for Soto with two outs and no one on. Winding up, 1-1 pitch off the outside corner. It's 2-1 now. Soto stands in there just 5'8", does the second baseman. A couple shorter second baseman for these teams. 5'8", Soto, 5'7", Akeo Thomas from Michigan. This one is hit right to the 5'7", Akeo Thomas. Second baseman to second baseman. Thomas makes the play, tosses over to first for out number three. So a walk that inning gets quickly erased by a caught stealing, and Rutgers ultimately goes down in order. Chris Wells faced the minimum through three, the score. Rutgers 0, Michigan 0, headed into the bottom of the third inning. Here on the official student radio broadcast for Michigan Baseball on WCBN Sports. And the competition dog-themed here at Ray Fisher Stadium. I would not do well at this one personally, I know. His name is more dog breeds than Blake Nelson. I can't say I'm an expert when it comes to dog breeds at all. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I have a few uh, a few breeds saved up in my bank of dog knowledge from <laughs> watching the Westminster Dog Show once or twice and there seen, you go. <laughs> seen Best in Show, but that's about it. <laughs> Fifteen was the count for our contestant here. I do like how Ray Fisher Stadium goes really all in when it comes to themed days like Bark in the Park. Absolutely. like to see that commitment from the athletics department. That's, that's a good job. The PA system, great as always, playing dog-themed music beforehand. Who let the dogs out? Atomic Dog. Blake Nelson hitting a bit of a snag here at 8 on the video board. I don't think he's going to get there in time. I don't think yeah, he's going to get to 15. There's no way he's beating 15 with two seconds left. Wow. It Got a gift card of some sort. I'm kind of jealous. I'm, I might have been able to do, to do 11. That, that's iffy. I'll say that. I think I would have beaten both of them. I'll, I'll be a little bit cocky yeah, here. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Say, go for it. Well, how, how much time do I have again? 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Okay. Golden Retriever, Black oh, Lab, uh, Great Dane, um, Dalmatian, Poodle, uh, Wheaton Terrier, Cocker Spaniel. We got baseball to, to call now, but <laughs> <laughs> keep going. But Go I was ahead. doing well. Uh, okay. Um, Golden Lab. Um, Ooh, I think you hit a snag there. I did hit a snag. Oh, uh, Husky, Siberian Husky, um, Malamute. Um, I, I'm slowing down here. Miles Lewis fouls the first pitch off and hits the second pitch down near the right field line. Ranging over to make the grab is Blum, though for out number one here in the bottom of the third. Beagles. <laughs> just, I'm, I'm run, starting to get some now that I could have said. It was too I late. I, I, not, oh, well. I probably ran out of time there, I think. Yeah, oh, my, absolutely. <laughs> okay, well, Thomas will come up to the plate now with one out here in the bottom of the third on WCBN Sports Dog Fest. <laughs> Thomas struggling a bit this season. 262 batting average, 314 on base percentage. Far cries from what he's done in the past. First pitch misses low and into him. The count's 1-0. Was the Wolverine leadoff hitter for most of his time here in Ann Arbor. But the senior now almost serving as that second leadoff hitter in the nine hole with Jordan Wogu being absolutely stellar for the Wolverines all season long as the 1-0 pitch misses low and in. It's 2-0. I mean, it's hard to take the guy that's batting 358 and getting on base at 483 clip out of leadoff spot, yeah, even if so, Akeo Thomas gets a little hot here. Absolutely. Yeah, to, to do so would be kind of managerial um, 
malpracticed almost. <laughs> that would, so they've got a great leadoff hitter in Wogu, and you know it's really good, uh, good of a Keo Thomas to shift his role and just keep playing to win. The 2-0 pitch missed low, brought it to 3-0, but the 3-0 pitch was in there for a strike. It's 3-1 now. It really shows you the leadership of a Keo Thomas as a senior. Takes a 3-2 pitch he thought was outside, ready to toss the bat away, but was called the strike, and the count's full. And I think that the uh, <laughs> the senior second baseman had, was, was the correct one in terms of that call. <laughs> Payoff pitch now. Swung on and fouled back to the screen. Time was a bit of a protect swing there on a breaking ball that was breaking down and in. But, yeah, absolutely, as you said, I mean, it's a great sign of, of what a leader you are when you've been in a role your entire career and then someone younger than you bumps you from that spot and you just keep contributing. 3-2 pitch. Going to be outside, but Thomas reaches his bat out and fouls it off to the right side. Count remains full, 3-2. and two. Winding up now, another 3-2 pitch on the way. Hit in the air to the right side of the infield. Soto ranges back into the outfield, but the right fielder Blum calls him off and drops the ball. Akeo Thomas was at first. He'd make his way to second. Now the throw over there is in time to get him. Ultimately, Rutgers gets the out anyway, but miscommunication in the outfield almost cost him there. Yeah, and Michigan really gifted an opportunity to get on base and almost make up for the walk that uh, Akeo Thomas should have, been, should have been granted by the umpire. Um, but Rutgers gifted uh, now by, by the umpire first and then by a kind of poor decision to try and stretch it to a double by K.O. Thomas, or to advance in the air, rather. Officially ruled a hit for K.O. Thomas, the single. I don't think anybody touched it before it hit the turf, which is the reasoning there. Right. Wogu takes a pitch low and away for a ball 1-0. That's the second time we've seen in this series for Rutgers uh, giving Michigan a hit because no one touched the ball on a pop-up. Yeah, which is an interesting move. Kind of shows you the loyalty of the home scorer. <laughs> <laughs> even though, you know, even, I mean, technically he didn't touch it, but that ball should have been caught. 1-0 pitch misses low to Jordan Wogu, and the count's 2-0 now. Wogu, well, we got to see a strike today. He walked on four pitches in his first at-bat back in the first, and now ahead in the count 2-0 here. And right on cue, ball three low. I, I kind of want to. I would kind of give Jordan Wogu the green light. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of green lights all the time, but I might give Jordan Wogu the green light here just based on the fact he hasn't seen a strike. I'm sure he's got a lot of pent up velocity in that swing, but doesn't matter here. It's ball four misses low and in. Wogu's seen eight pitches, been on base twice today. Yeah, and I mean, can't really uh, can't complain about that as a hitter. I mean, I'm sure you want to drive the ball, but getting on base with and with that speed, there's probably no better way to to try and contrib contribute to a win in a low-scoring game like this. Well, who stole second back in the first inning when Jordan Brewer was at the plate. With two gone here in the third, he's dancing off first again with Jesse Franklin coming to the plate. Check swing on a ball that missed high. Did not go around since their base umpire, John Coons. So the count is one ball and no strikes. Franklin struck out swinging, the first strikeout victim of Murray today. First of four. Breaking ball misses low and in. It's 2-0. and And there's that breaking ball again that doesn't quite break. It wasn't a bad one this time. It broke a little bit, but just not quite enough. It almost seems like Murray's breaking ball either is always breaking so much that he doesn't know where it's going to necessarily end up, or it comes out very flat. Wogu going on the pitch. 2-0 misses, or rather is on the outside corner, I believe, for a strike. The throw down on a hop. Wogu's in there safely at second. His second stolen base of the day. And good speed by Wogu there. He got a pretty good jump, but is also aided by the bounce of the, of the throw by the catcher, McNamara. So now Wogu's 12th stolen base on the year in 14 attempts. Ties him for the team lead. He's in scoring position now with two outs on the third. Michigan with a chance to take the lead. And push across the first run of the ball game. 2-1 pitch. Breaking ball misses well outside. There's that breaking ball that almost broke too much that time. Yeah, again, he's really struggling to, to command that pitch. It looks great when he does, but uh, otherwise it's kind of all over the place. And that's the kind of thing where you really need to refine that pitch and, and find your, your feel and get it to work before you want to bring it out in a game where it's kind of inconsistent. 
3-1 pitch to Franklin off the outside corner, ball four. Got to have a breaking ball in your repertoire, but when it's not quite quite working the way you need it to, it's almost more of a liability than an asset. Jordan Brewer will come up to the plate now with two runners on after back-to-back -back walks. We're going to talk about someone that can give Michigan the lead. Jordan Brewer certainly probably the top name on that list. We talked about how he leads the Wolverines and batting average and RBIs, home runs, hits. Just about all of the big statistical categories. He yeah. takes or rather swings at a good breaking ball, missing breaking low and in. And the count is 0-1. Needless to say that there's no one you'd rather have up for, for Michigan probably than Jordan Brewer right now. Although that was a really good breaking ball that he uh, took a hack out there. He was thinking three-run homer over that left field wall with that ball breaking down and in. Almost you know how lefties like the ball down and in. Jordan Brewer is a guy has, from the right side of the plate that also can do damage with that ball down and in on him. Oh, one pitch, fastball strike on the outside part of the plate. Counts 0-2 now. Yeah, and always a sign of a, of a good hitter when you can turn on that ball inside and, and hit it, drive it with power, regardless of where it's located. Well, we're trying to avoid striking out for the second time today. Or rather, Jordan Brewer. 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball hit into left field, and that is going to get down for a base hit. Wogu's coming around third to score, heading on his way to third is Franklin. The relay throw is off of Franklin and it gets away. Franklin is going to try to score. No, he's not. He's going to retreat back to the bag. Good decision by Franklin there. No way he was going to make it home in time. And Michigan lucked out on the throw that went off Franklin's uh, uh, cleat, rather. Yeah, I think he probably still would have been safe, though, without the error. I believe that's going to go down as a double for Jordan Brewer. RBI double, and Michigan leads 1-0 here in the bottom of the third. It is indeed scored a double, not a single, and advancing on the throw. Again, I think the right decision there. And as you mentioned, a good decision by Franklin also not going home. And perhaps aided there by John Kuhn's third base umpire, who was getting in position to make a call on that play at third, and... As he was trying to shuffle out of the way, Franklin almost ran into him, stopped this momentum, and made him go back. Otherwise, like you said, I think Franklin is dead to rights at home if yeah. he goes. We get a mound visit here from the pitching coach, Phil Kunderi, his second season for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Gives a little chat with his junior left-hander. And now takes the slow walk back to the dugout. And perhaps just trying to help him regroup after back-to-back -back walks and giving up the RBI double. Yeah, in a game that looks like it could be tight down the stretch, you want to make sure you are locked in for every pitch, every batter, not giving up anything you don't have to. Yeah, if you're Murray here, only allowing one this inning is the goal at this point. Two runners in scoring position, two outs. Jimmy Kerr at the plate. Lefty-lefty breaking ball hit in the air to the right side. This one perhaps giving some trouble. The right fielder is Blum. He makes the catch on this one, though, calling off both the first baseman, Brito, and the second baseman, Soto. No such circus acts as we saw earlier in the inning. But Michigan does score one run that inning. They score one run on what goes down as two hits. No errors officially in that inning. But Michigan stranded two. We're headed to the fourth inning. Michigan leads Rutgers by a score of one to nothing here on WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan Baseball. We thank you for tuning in today on what is a gorgeous day here. Bark at the park, blue skies, and baseball. Doesn't get much better than that. Absolutely. Nothing, uh, nothing better than dogs, baseball, and good weather. A little bounce house on the right, down by the first base side as well for the kiddos. I'd imagine the dogs aren't allowed in there. I'm going to guess not. I don't think that would go too well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you'd have kind of a flat bounce. Yeah, I, 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 get, I get flat real quick. Yeah, in moments. <laughs> I would love to see that, though, honestly. Make a bounce house for dogs and just let yeah. them go to town. I want to see dogs at, like, the, I don't know what they're called, but they have these places where that are just kind of wall-to-wall -wall with trampolines. Yeah. There's one in my, ho my home county called the trampoline parks, Bounce. Yeah. I, and I think there's there are others. But, like, if you could bring a dog there, how that would go, that would be certainly interesting as well. <laughs> well, you heard it here first. 
WCBN Sports, we're going to make a dog trampoline park. And turn it into a new sport and then announce it. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the plan. A few years back, one of WCBN's not uh, very attainable goals was create a new sport. I think we figured it out. <laughs> okay. There we go. It only took a few years. It only took us a couple of years. <laughs> we'll go back to the top of the Rutgers order. It's Mike Neister. His second time at the plate. Hit a fly ball to center field that was run down by Jordan Brewer to start things off on the very first pitch of the ball game. Winding up is Chriswell. First pitch to Neister outside for a ball 1-0. And we're still seeing a little bit of a lack of leadoff strikes being thrown by Chris Wall here. Getting less efficient as the game goes on. 1-0 pitch now. Fastball is fouled off to the right side. That'll get up and out of play and to the parking lot area. And that one he poured right in there, going after the hitter. Good sign. He has done a good job, has Chris Wall. If he ever falls behind in the count of battling back with the one exception of the walk back just last inning. He winds up now 1-1 pitch. Misses high. It's now 2-1. Neister, not a very patient hitter, so you really have to miss significantly to put him on base via walk. Only 11 on the season, which is very uncharacteristic for a leadoff hitter. 2-1 pitch on the way to him. Hit in the air to the right side. That one's going to get out of play into the Rutgers bullpen and even the count up at two balls and two strikes. Does make plenty of contact, though. Yeah, his o his on-base percentage only about 50 points higher than his average, so not getting on via the, via the walk a whole lot, but he must just do something with in his approach that Rutgers' managerial staff appreciates. Puts the bat on the ball, does Neister in the 2-0, or rather 2-2 pitch, is fouled off to the right side in the parking lot and avoids a couple cars and bounces off the back of one. The count will remain 2-2. Two and two. Just missed a couple more patrons making their way over towards softball. Grishwell gets his sign. Winds up. Another 2-2 pitch on the way. Breaking ball. Misses low and away. The count's even, or rather, run full. 3-2. and two. Perhaps this is really what Rutgers likes out of Neister. Just sticking in the count. Putting bat on ball. He gets one in or near the strike zone. He's going to put it in play. 3-2 pitch on the way. Foul back over our heads this time, and the count will remain 3-2. and two. And he certainly stays in stays in uh, counts and battles, that's for sure. Maybe just seeing a lot of pitches no matter what is uh, is what's appreciated by Rutgers. Even though he doesn't seem to see a lot of pitches late enough in the count to, to walk. So He did say at the very first pitch of the ball game, yeah. which is... Again, somewhat rare for leadoff hitters. 3-2 pitch, hit on the ground to the left side. Blake Nelson makes the play with two hands, throws on the run to first in time, out number one. So after that long battle on pitch number eight of the at-bat, Chris Well wins it with the ground out. And there's one out here coming up to the plate will be Kevin Welsh. Welsh, the shortstop for Rutgers, also flew out to center field back in the first inning. A ball almost misplayed by Jordan Brewer out there. He was sprinting towards the right center field gap and had to go straight back. His first pitch misses low to Welsh this time, 1-0. And Chriswell may be a little apprehensive about going after this, this top of the order after the hard contact made earlier. Trying to as, as though he's not firing in, in as many first pitch strikes against them. Kind of going away from the fastball on the first pitch and misfiring with the breaking balls as he does there. It looks like a slider misses low and in, and the count is 2-0. and I mean, on one hand, you want to stay away from that hard contact, not give anything in the zone after they hit you hard, but on the other hand, it's not like they saw very many pitches, so you don't have to necessarily change up your sequencing too much. 2-0 pitch. Hit in the air to the right field. Going back now is Lewis near the track and backpedaling makes the grab with his heels right on the edge of what would be the warning track here at Ray Fisher Stadium for out number two. And more hard contact from that from Welsh there against Criswell, but did not matter. Is good play made by Lewis in right field. That'll bring up Tim Desi now. 
Back in the first inning after the first two hitters made hard contact, Desi popped out on a weakly hit pop fly to Jack Blomgren made the grab right at the second base bag. First pitch of this at bat, another breaking ball. It looked like they're to start. Misses low and away. It's 1-0. and and you mentioned that almost entirely right-handed lineup from Rutgers. Chris Wall, when he misses, is missing low and away quite a bit with that breaking ball to those right-handed hitters. If you're going to miss in a spot, though, that's pretty much the spot you want to miss. Definitely. Can't really do any damage down there. 1-0 pitch on the way. Fastball off the plate outside. Just outside, apparently. Yeah, and, and for to force a chase on one of those pitches would definitely induce some weak contact and probably a ground ball in and out. So not a bad approach, but that's where he is missing today. So good job by Chris Well of missing, missing, missing smart, I suppose. I suppose. Falling behind a third straight hitter here in the fourth. Another 2-0 pitch. Hit in the air towards the left center field gap. Ranging over near the gap and making the grab is Wogu for out number three. A couple of hard hit balls that inning, but nothing to show for it. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. Michigan leads Rutgers by a score of one to nothing here on WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan Baseball. And at about 39 or 40 pitches through four innings, Chris Wells' position to go deep today. I have to imagine manager Eric Bakic is pretty excited about that. He has faced the minimum, walked just one batter who was erased on a caught stealing. That's it for the Rutgers offense through four innings. Meanwhile, Michigan was able to scratch across a run back in the third off a couple of hits. They'll send up the same three they started the second inning with, Blomgren, Donovan, and Nelson. Right, ready, that inning went go. very well for Murray. Struck out two and went one, two, three in that inning. Be interesting to see if he can use this as almost a bounce back after struggling a little bit in that last inning. And that's a part of the lineup he's already had success against. Murray, a big left-hander, 6'6". Six, six. Out of Ringtown, Pennsylvania. It always seems like those big left-handers have those really good, sharp breaking balls. And that certainly stands true for Murray. When he can control it, that breaking ball is something to see. As that'll be Jack Blomgren making his way to the dish to start things here in the bottom half of the fourth, trying to extend that one nothing lead a little bit, give Chris Well a little bit of breathing room. Blomgren struck out looking, or rather struck out swinging back in the second. He grounds one over to short, making the play on the backhand as Welsh in the hole. Strong throw on the run to first base is in time for out number one. Nice play over there by Welsh. Great play by Welsh, ranging to his right and making the play while running to his right, uh, beating Blomgren by almost a full stride. Really nice job in the hole at shortstop by Welsh. And a good start to the inning for Murray as well, who uh, comes into this bottom of the fourth with 59 pitches thrown. So uh, been, has been, he's been working a lot less efficiently than Criswell. It'll be Joe Donovan now with one gone and nobody on. He fouls the first pitch back off of the press box for strike one. See, that's the type of ball I need. I was going to say, here. that one a little bit more horizontally aligned towards us would be perfect. Could have reached up and grabbed that. Yeah, absolutely. 0-1 pitch misses down into Joe Donovan now. As he dances out of the way and the count's even up at one apiece. Donovan grounded out to third back in the second inning. After a couple of very, very well-placed strikes from Murray, had him down in the count 0-2. This time he's ahead in the count 2-1 and one now as that one misses low and in. See if that changes things and helps him have a little more success. Lined up 2-1 pitch, misses low again, and the count's 3-1 and one now. And good job of Donovan of, of staying patient. He's uh, shown off his power in the past few series. Hit a big three-run homer yesterday. Got to imagine his patient approach and uh, waiting for a good pitch to hit is part of that. 3-1 pitch is bounced towards the left side. That'll get foul, though. And that'll bring the count full 3-2. and two. Joe Donovan drafted by the Chicago Cubs out of high school, but 
It was pretty much assumed he was going to be coming to Michigan regardless. And thus he did. He's won the starting job this season. 3-2 pitch to him. Swung on and missed for strike three. Actually a foul tip on that one, but still goes down as the strikeout for Murray, his fifth of the day. And there's two outs here in the fourth. Blake Nelson coming to the plates. Good pitch by Murray there. Executing well to cause the, the, the swinging strike. Couldn't tell if that was a changeup or maybe a two-seamer, but definitely had a little bit of movement on it that got Donovan to swing right through it. Blake Nelson steps up for his second at-bat of the day and watches the pitch bounce in the dirt for ball one. Nelson went down looking on strikes back in the second. Murray painted the corner with a fastball on one and two on that at-bat. It's a 1-1 pitch, half swing foul down the right field line. The count's 1-1. One and, one. and Murray's stuff is looking good now. He's getting Michigan hitters to chase all, all sorts of things. And uh, that check swing there from Nelson, getting a strike on that is some accidental contact made. Really felt like the turning point was when he started to locate the breaking ball a little bit as Nelson fouls one off his foot. And the count's 1-2. and two. Yeah, once he started to get a little bit better command of that pitch, that really changed things for him. And every time you can add a pitch to your repertoire that's working well, it's going to can add a whole other layer of hit it, of thinking that the hitter has to do. Murray gets the cyan glove in front of his face. Winds up pitching from smack dab in the middle of the rubber. Breaking ball on one two is fouled down the left field line. Count will remain one and two. He left that breaking ball up that time, did Murray. And Nelson was just able to hang back just long enough to put a swing on it and foul it off. Here we are, ready for another 1-2 pitch. Fastball low and away. Counts 2-2 two and two now. Murray's fastball doesn't have a ton of velocity on it, but it does have good arm side movement. And it pairs very well with that curve ball when you can locate it. 2-2 two, two pitch. Hit high in the air towards the right side. Ranging over near the line is Blum. He's got room and he makes the grab for out number three. A quick inning there for Murray. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base as Michigan goes down 1-2-3 in the fourth. We'll head to the fifth now. Michigan leads Rutgers 1-0 on the official student radio broadcast for Michigan baseball here on WCBN Sports. And Chris Wall, Chris Wall comes out at 42 pitches thrown. His career, his season high is in, in innings pitched is six and two thirds, which he's done twice this season. Have to imagine he'd get further than that if he keeps it up at this current pace. And we're starting to get into the territory where you start kind of watching that second column on the scoreboard there. Just gonna kind of wait till after the fifth inning should he get there to really mention anything about it, but. With the way Chris Wells looked and how efficient he has been, might have a shot to see something special here today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially if he keeps uh, being smart with, with how he goes after the Rutgers hitters. He's definitely been doing a good job of staying efficient, but you can't get too uh, overzealous with, with piping your pitches in, into the zone until one's uh, driven out to right or left. We did see some hard contact back in the fourth. Yeah, that's true. He, he has been lucky with uh, getting enough air under the balls that he's letting letting being hit up up in the air. And um, Michigan is playing solid defense behind him as well. It'll be the middle of the order for Rutgers. Four, five, and six hitters due up. Chris Brito, Tyler McNamara, Victor Valderrama. They went down one, two, three back in the second. Starting off with Brito, who is the only strikeout victim this far for Jeff Criswell. First pitch to him is low for a ball 1-0. And, and there's the trend again of starting off behind hitters. Yeah, Criswell, I mean, he must be struggling to locate that fastball a little bit or something. Something must be up with that because that's probably what he's throwing first to most hitters. 1-0 pitch misses low again, and it's 2-0. By my count, the fourth straight batter, he's fallen behind 2-0 going back to last inning. Doesn't seem to be phased by it, though, does Chriswell. So he winds up 2-0 pitch. 
it high in the air towards center field. Going back now is Brewer. He's going back near the track, but he's going to have room, and he ranges under and makes the grab for out number one. And again... Griswold just doing a good good enough job to, to make to make these Rutgers hitters miss his balls. Um, they're not able to fully barrel it up, and as a result, they're dying on the track or before. I'll bring up Tyler McNamara, now the catcher. McNamara grounded out to third base in the second inning. Open stance in that right-handed batter's box. Criswell winds up pitching from the third base side of the rubber and fires a first pitch strike on the inside corner, so... Breaks that trend. The wind really swirling around here at Ray Fisher Stadium. It was blowing in from right field earlier, then was blowing out to right. Now it's blowing out towards left center. Yeah, it's the flag is aligned almost straight at Alumni Field out to left center right now, which is definitely a change from, from how this wind started off today. 0-1 breaking ball caught the outside corner. It's 0-2 now. McNamara seemingly hasn't agreed with either of these first two strike calls. But he's down 0-2, and the pitch to him is check swing. He went around as the ball's in the dirt. Donovan applies the tag for out number two. And Criswell keeps working swiftly. Even when he gets behind, he's doing a good job getting, getting back into counts and, and making work of the hitters. Second strike out of the day there for Criswell. Second out of the inning here in the fifth. And Victor Val Valderrama will take his second at-bat of the day. Valderrama grounded out to short back in the second inning. Someone just came by with some food in front of us. It smells good. Ground ball up the middle off of Criswell's foot. He recovers and throws to first base in time for the out. That one was taken in for center field. Criswell's foot didn't get in the way. And another 1-2-3 inning for Jeff Criswell. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base. We're halfway home here at Ray Fisher Stadium. Michigan leads by a 1-0 score. Chris Wall doing a good job of piping one in there that the, uh, I believe it was McNamara was able to drive out, but it didn't matter. And then Valderrama on the, uh, on the uh, ground, ground ball there that went off Chris Wall's leg. Another good, good play by Chris Wall to recover swiftly and, and make the hard throw to first. With Valderrama sliding at first on the, on the play, interesting decision. Almost never works. Right. <laughs> you're never going to get there quicker if you're sliding, but... I mean, you got, I think you got a slightly better chance on turf than you do on dirt. A little less drag, I think. But, mm -hmm. yeah, still not a great move. Yeah, definitely not. Especially when you got a tougher angle on that play. The ball maybe clips your elbow as you're running or something. You're on base as opposed to if you're sliding. Really no chance of getting even a, a, a vague obstruction for that throw from the pitcher. Yeah, the only time it really seems smart to me to slide into first is when the, the first baseman is being pulled off the bag by the throw and it's being pulled down the line towards the runner because then maybe you can avoid the tag by sliding. But other than that, it's definitely not a smart uh, strategy to try and beat out a, beat out a ball. For Michigan here in the bottom half of the fifth will be Miles Lewis, Akeo Thomas, and then back to the top of the order for Jordan Wogu all due up in this inning. The same three that was scheduled to hit back in the third that led to a Michigan run after a little two-out rally. Miles Lewis will try to start things off a little bit earlier on in the inning here in the fifth. Lewis flying out to fairly deep right field back when the wind was blowing in from right a bit. First pitch to him is high on the fastball. The count's 1-0. So Lewis 0 for 1 of the day, really struggling over the past couple weekends. Wasn't in the lineup on Friday. And now back near the bottom of the lineup as opposed to where he was before in the four hole. Takes a breaking ball for a strike, counts 1 and 1. And good to see back it's switch, switching things up when his hitters are struggling. You know, never a bad idea to move someone down the lineup. 1-1 one, one pitch, line drive into left field for a base hit. Talk about how Miles Lewis is struggling. An authoritative line drive single there to lead things off in the fifth. And it pays dividends when it works. Just changing things up for your hitters, giving them a new look to try and get them back into the swing of things. Always a smart smart move by a manager. And we talk about the man coming to the plate now, Akeo Thomas, and how he was adjusting to his new role well. 
Talking about Miles Lewis as well, the captain redshirt senior on this team. Also seemingly very willing to go down to that bottom part of the lineup while he's struggling and set the table for some other guys and doing a good job there. Lewis is a threat to steal over on first base also, and thus a pickoff throw t makes him go back into the bag standing up. Lewis is 8 for 13 on the season. Tied for third on the team in stolen bases, I believe. Another pickoff throw chasing the back, this time sliding. And my correction, Christian Bullock has a couple more, so he's tied for fourth, rather, on the team with Blake Nelson. Is squaring around a bunt here is Akeo Thomas. He pulls back and takes the strike on the outside corner. Owen wins the count. So a little bit of small ball here from Eric Backich. I don't blame him getting into the mid middle innings of a one nothing ball game. Not a bad idea to manufacture some runs. Thomas squaring around before the pitch is thrown. And pickoff throw chases Lewis back at first. Wouldn't be surprised if this is a little slap hit here with how early Thomas is squaring around. Playing really far in now at third is Clefani, the third baseman. But if Thomas is bunting, if he can put it on the right field line or the first base line, he's got a chance to beat it out with the lefty on the mound who falls off towards that third base bag. Pulling back on the 0-1 pitch is Thomas. He bounces to second, but going on the pitch was Lewis. So Lewis will get to second base. As the play is made by Soto, tosses to first, and retires Akeo Thomas. So not officially a sacrifice bunt, but worked essentially as one. Yeah, and all that matters is, is advancing that runner, and if you can do it successfully, then you're in a good position to score. So regardless of the method, the outcome was favorable for the, for Michigan right there. Jordan Wogu now steps to the plate with a runner in scoring position. And however they can generate some extra work and extra distraction for Murray right now is going to be smart, as it'll probably help them get to that Rutgers bullpen as soon as possible. Wogu yet to see a strike today. He's been on base twice on two walks. Both of them on four pitches. See if he finally gets one in the zone and whether he gets a little antsy and takes a hack at it. He does take a hack and a line drive straight at the third baseman, Sclafani. I almost take it in for left field corner, but Sclafani right there in the way. So that goes down as out number two. And it just seems like Wogu got out ahead of that ball a little bit, and, and the contact was kind of weak, allowing Scalfani to make the easy play at third. He went down to his knees to make the play, but the ball wasn't hit particularly hard, so not too hard of a catch, and thankfully for Michigan, uh, it was Blomgren, I believe, who's not too far off the bag. Or rather... Lewis out there on second. Lewis, Lewis out there on second, who wasn't too, off, too far off the bag, so he did not get picked off. Jesse Franklin now with a chance to drive in a run with two outs. Takes a first pitch low for a ball, 1-0. Franklin is 0-for-1 today, strikeout and a walk. And something notable back when Franklin walked in the third and then went all the way to third on that Brewer RBI double, running and looking good running for Jesse Franklin. Did not look comfortable at all earlier on in this series, making his way back from what we presume was an injury. So 1 0 pitch misses inside for a ball 2 0. His stellar defensive standout is Jesse Franklin out in center field. Great range, great instincts out there as well, but hasn't been out in center. He's been designated hitter in this weekend's ball games. Crouch trying to ease him back into action. That's a 2 0 pitch to him now at the plate, is on the outside corner for a strike 2 and 1. And that ball broke nicely and just caught the outside corner as it was falling off the plate. Can't complain about that decision there because it would have been hard to... T it's a hard ball to swing out when you when you think it's probably breaking out over the plate, or out off the plate, rather. Especially when you're up in the count 2-0. Don't really think about anything that's not right in the sweet spot. 2-1 pitch. Misses low and away. Ball three. Again, ahead in the count here is Franklin. Trying to keep this thing moving along. Jordan Brewer, the menacing presence on the end deck circle. The 
Looking in now is Murray for the sign, taking his time. Now gets what he wanted. Looks back at Lewis at second. Now fires a 3-1 pitch that's hit in the air to the left side, tailing near out of play, and it will get out of play. And the count will run full, 3-2. and two. And Franklin took a nice healthy cut at that one. I think he probably thought that was going to stay in a little bit more than it did, and it kind of broke out over the plate again, where he's breaking ball, working well here again, or uh, at least his ball's running well here again. Franklin almost looks like he kind of takes a seat in that left-handed batter's box when he's waiting for the pitch. And the 3-2 pitch misses low, ball four. Franklin walks for the second straight at bat, and there's a couple runners on. Jordan Brewer with the exact same chance he had back in the third. Two outs, two on. A chance to extend the Michigan lead now. And Franklin showing off exactly why he has that 390 OVP despite batting only 237 on the year. Really great approach there. And taking a close ball off the plate that was called a ball for the walk. So good eye there by Franklin. Now Jordan Brewer, the man with the only RBI of the ball game today. Stepping up, the first pitch to him. Swung on and foul right off the mask of McNamara behind the plate. Looks to be all right. And the count's 0-1. Brewers RBI back in the third. His team leading 41st of the season on that big RBI double in the left field corner. Almost the exact same situation. Franklin was on first. The difference, it's not Wogu on second, it's Miles Lewis. Jordan Brewer calling time now at the plate as Murray has really slowed down the pace here in this inning. Yeah, he's taking time with with those runners on and have to assume it's a quite a distraction that's really put Michigan in a good place to score here. As soon as Lewis got to second and you're worried about any potential relaying signs, you got to mix up your signs as a catcher. Murray's taking a long time to really process and get to the pitches he wants as the 0-1 pitch is on the, on, on the outside corner. 0-2 the count again. It was 0-2 when Brewer hit the double back in the third. Murray left something over the plate, and Brewer took advantage of it. I would be shocked to see anything near the strike zone here this time. Especially given that he was able to get Brewer to chase on the strikeout back in the first. Murray looks in for the sign, now steps off the back of the rubber and resets things. Second baseman Soto vaguely holding Lewis on over at second. Yeah, he's shaded over towards the bag a little bit more than the shortstop. Definitely Murray, in a far better position to make the play. Murray taking a while again, and Jordan Brewer calls time at the plate again. Crowd getting a little restless here. Yep. <laughs> they've noticed the change in pace. Pedro Baez-esque. Yeah. 0-2 oh, pitch to Brewer. It is a line shot bouncing off of Sclafani at third base. He recovers and dives to the third base bag and got him. Great play by Sclafani to recover and dive to the bag ahead of Lewis for out number three. Probably saved a run there as well, knocking that ball down. Really impressive play there. The ball was hit almost directly at his chest, but he was able to get in front of it and block it as the... Power hitting Brewer made a, made a good made good contact on that ball and uh, great effort there by by Scofani to dive at the bag and just make the play get there just about a half stride before the runner. So that inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, two men left on base for the Wolverines. We'll head to the sixth inning of action now. The score still Michigan one, Rutgers zero. Jeff Criswell taking his spot back on the mound out ahead of all his fielders. That was the good old five unassisted play. Don't see that one too often in the scorebook, but got it there to end the bottom of the fifth inning. In the sixth, it'll be the bottom third of the Rutgers order. Sclafani, Blum, and Soto. That features the only batter to reach against Chriswell the first time through the lineup. That was Blum, who walked back in the third and was promptly erased on a caught stealing. 
And a good strong throw from Joe Donovan. Part of why he won the job is he just had that strong, accurate arm down to second base. Carmen Sclafani steps up to start things off, though. He popped out into right field that was caught by the first baseman, Kerr, in his first at-bat in the third inning. First pitch here. Misses low and away. Looked like a, another breaking ball to try to start things off. It's 1-0. and And here goes Chris Well with the first pitch ball again. We'll see how he responds. He's done so quite well today. 1-0 pitch. Misses low and away again. It's 2-0. A lot of 2-0 counts here from Chris Rallo this time through the order. He really seems to be trying to pick that outside corner with the, with the breaking ball and uh, just trying to be really fine and accurate with it. And I'm not sure that's necessarily the right move, especially against the bottom of this Rutgers order. Winding up, 2-0 pitch. Ground ball to third, making the play as Nelson on a couple hops. He bobbles it, but then recovers and throws the first scoop at first base by Jimmy Kerr. Got him. And a great play by Kerr there to grab the ball on the bounce and get the runner just in time. But also a good decision by Criswell to, to just get, uh, pour the ball over and, and into the zone and go after the hitter down 2-0. Once again, battling back into it and inducing weak contact for a ground ball out. Kevin Blum comes to the plate now. As I mentioned, the only player for Rutgers to reach base, and it was on a walk. He swings, waggles that bat around in the right-handed batter's box. First pitch from Chriswell, fastball, strike one. And there's that same approach, but he gets the call this time. And it really seems, it seems to be working for him, even when he's not getting the calls. It, it must just be that he's set, setting up the hitters well. Chriswell takes a breath as he does for every pitch. Now the 0-1. This one, bouncer towards first. Kerr is going to make the play fairly easily and step on the bag all by himself for out number two. That one's hit to the left side, probably a base hit with that high chopper off the turf, but hit right basically to the first base bag. Carter just had to snag it and take a couple steps over to the base. So two outs here in the sixth. David Soto comes to the plate now. He grounded out to second base back in the third inning. First pitch to him this time is a fastball. It misses high. Counts 1-0. Oh. That's a place we haven't seen Chris Rell miss much at all today is high. Yeah, not doing a lot of work up in the zone. He really seems to be trying to keep it low, and that's probably a good reason, a reason why he's got a lot of those ground balls. 1-0 and... oh pitch, fastball, strike one. Right down the middle there, Soto didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, I have to wonder what he was waiting for on that one. Freshman batting just 115 on the season now after his ground out earlier on. Trying to find himself some success here. 1-1 one, one pitch. Squares on to bunt. Bunt right back towards the mound. Criswell makes the play barehanded without a hat. Throws to first. It's offline. We'll see how that one scored. Could be the first hit of the day for Rutgers or perhaps a throwing error by Criswell. It's a throwing error by Criswell. A little home scoring there perhaps. Yeah, it, that's, it wasn't even that bad of a throw. It really took, did, it did pull Kerr off the bag, so not a good throw, that's for sure. But, but uh, definitely seems like some home, home cooking there with, this, with the score and that play. I'm sure Chriswell doesn't mind being saddled with the error in this case. Yeah, this is one situation where I would not be, not be too upset with an error. So tying went on first base. Mike Neister at the plate now. Chriswell steps off the back of the rubber. Soto a threat to steal perhaps over at first base. He's got three stolen bases on the season and the limited amount of times he's been able to get on base this year. Not going here as those pitches hit high in the air towards the right center field gap. Jordan Brewer ranges over, but he's called off by Miles Lewis who makes the catch for out number three. So Chriswell no longer facing the minimum but there is a big old zero in that second column on the scoreboard as Rucker scores no runs on no hits. One error that inning, one man left on base. We're through five and a half innings worth of play. Michigan leads Rutgers still by a score of one to nothing. An excellent work by Criswell in that inning as well. 
even though he left the runner on and, and he had a, a threat of the steal, he made a good, made some executed some good pitches to uh, induce contact. And even though it was hit well out to, well out to the outfield, like we've seen a few times today, didn't do any damage, and uh, it's allowing him to continue to work quickly and efficiently in this in this game. Already through six, with only about 60 pitches thrown. So he's on pace to probably go the full nine if he if he wants. Yeah, head coach Eric Backage is so inclined to do so. And if this trend continues, then yeah. I, I, I don't personally uh, worry about the jinxes, but I know some people are very sensitive about it, so I'm just going to avoid it altogether. I think that's the, start, that's the smart play right there. <laughs> you can never please everyone, but that's probably the best way to please most. Some action in the Rutgers bullpen as we're about to get things started off here. In the bottom of the sixth, Murray's up at 86 pitches coming into this inning. He'll get the four, five, and six hitters, Kerr, Blomgren, and Donovan in this Michigan order here in the sixth inning. Jimmy Kerr on the day, 0 for 2 with a couple fly outs, one to left, one to right. And I'm sure Criswell wouldn't mind some more insurance, and it's the perfect place to get it, facing four, five, and six in Michigan order. Winding up now, lefty, lefty, first pitch, breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike, 0 and 1. McNamara does a really nice job of setting up on that outside corner and framing pitches on that outside corner and getting some calls. Can't frame that one, though, as it misses well outside. That's straight out of the, uh, the major league, just a bit outside there. I was going to say the same thing. That, <laughs> that's one that's just a little bit too outside for, for him to frame. Almost a major, major league-esque pitch. 1-1 one, one pitch is fouled off to the left side. That'll get up out of play near Yost Ice Arena. And the count goes to one ball and two strikes. And the foul ball is being sprayed all around us, but not to us. One of these days. 1-2 pitch to Kerr now. Fastball misses off the plate away. It's now 2-2. Two and two. Kerr thought about just sticking the bat out as a protect swing, but it just drifted too far off the plate for him. And this breaking ball is starting to really, really break for, uh, for Murray here. As it's been a little inconsistent, but now it's just breaking too much. 2-2 two, two pitch. Big breaking ball there. Swing and a miss from, Chris, or from Kerr, rather, for out number one. And he gets it to work when he needs it to. That's a really excellent, excellently executed breaking ball from Murray there. Broke the perfect amount and just finished right over the middle of the plate to fan Kerr. Start yeah. the inning. Started off on that inside part of the plate and just broke straight down and straight over. Kerr came up empty trying to really golf that one. Jack Blomgren's at the plate now. He's 0 for 2 on the ball game. Takes a first pitch fastball strike on the outside corner. Blomgren struck out looking in the second and grounded out in the fourth. And again, it smells like someone got some fresh food right down below us over here. They keep, they keep coming up. It's making me hungry up here. Yeah, that's tantalizing. Blomgren hits a two-hopper to short. Big, strong throw made by Welsh. Takes Brito off the bag, but he makes the tag on Blomgren running past for out number two. And that right there is about the only situation where I think it'd be smart to, to slide into first, even though it probably wouldn't have helped him there. That ball, that yeah. ball was not uh, poorly thrown enough for it to really help him there, but... The other problem there with sliding into first is it's almost too late to decide to slide when the, the throws off line. You're going to get tagged sometimes. That's true, especially when it's, when it's not that far off like that one was. Joe Donovan, first pitch to him is outside, 1-0. Donovan 0-2 for 2 in the ballgame, ground out to third and a strikeout. One of what is now six strikeout victims from Tevin Murray today. No one's gone down twice, so it's been spreading the strikeouts across this Michigan order. Foul ball hit high off to the right side and out of play back near the parking lot. The count's 1-1. One one. Down in the right-hander against the left-handed throwing Murray. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fouled off just about the exact same spot off to this right side. And the count's 1-2. and two. And Donovan, who's been much more patient today, and this at bat is kind of going after some of these early pitches, and they've been they've been in the zone, so can't blame them. But a little bit different approach here. 
One two pitch, break breaking ball, misses in the dirt, nice stop by McNamara behind the plate. The count's two and two. And really this middle of the heart of the order for Michigan has come up empty against Murray. He's done a great job from Kerr through Nelson, the four, five, six, and seven hitters. A combined thus far O for if I have this right, O for eleven, O for ten. O for ten officially. It's a breaking ball missed just barely low there to Donovan and runs the count full three and two. None of them have reached base. Donovan with a chance to here, perhaps on 3 2, though. Winding up, payoff pitch. Fastball hit high in the air towards center field. Valderrama's going to have some room out there, plenty of room, in fact. He makes the play for out number three. So just as he's done all day, Murray responds to an inning where he gave up a couple of base runners with a 1 2 3 frame, including a strikeout. His day's probably done. We'll see officially in the seventh. But through six innings of play, he and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights trail on the scoreboard 1-0 to the Michigan Wolverines. You're listening to the official student radio broadcast of Michigan baseball here on WCBN Sports. Austin Falco, Owen Swanson bringing you today's action. Michigan going for the sweep against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And not a bad at bat from Donovan there. He battled back into it, taking a good ball, and then made solid contact, but just not quite enough on it. Kind of had to reach down low in the zone to, to make make good contact, and uh, the ball died in center field as a result. So uh, we'll just have to see if Criswell can keep keep his excellent pitching up. That's probably going to be the difference today in a close game against Rutgers. A close game and a pivotal game at that as well. Michigan currently sits at first place in the Big Ten standings, a half a game ahead of the Indiana Hoosiers. Indiana ranked 23rd in the country, currently leads Minnesota by a score of 3 to nothing in the bottom of the second inning down in Bloomington. Meanwhile, across the rest of the Big Ten, Ohio State leads Iowa 1-0 in Columbus. They're in the third inning of that one. And in the third inning in Nebraska, it's 0-0 between Illinois and the Huskers. The only other Big Ten game or game featuring a Big Ten team on the slate today is Southeast Missouri State visiting Purdue. That game will start in about a half hour. The other game in the state of Michigan, Michigan State Northwestern were scheduled to have a game today, but they moved it up due to impending weather in East Lansing today. So they played a doubleheader yesterday that they was split between the Wildcats and the Spartans. Kevin Welsh leads things off here in the seventh inning and takes a pitch outside for a ball 1-0 from Chriswell. Chriswell takes a minute now, 1-0 pitch to the switch hitting Welsh batting from the left side of the plate. That one's on the outside corner on 1-0 and evens kind of at 1-1. One one. Welsh has put a couple good swings on balls from Chriswell today. Deep fly out to center and a deep fly out to right. Winding up 1-1 pitch. This one's a blooper hit towards left center field. Wogu's coming in and he makes the grab for out number one. Nice play by Wogu and now Criswell has gotten Welsh to send balls to the outfield and all three times he's been up. This time by far, by far the weakest contact though. He's officially painted the outfield there. He's hit left center and right. Tim Desi steps to the plate now designated hitter in the three hole for Rutgers today. 0 for 2 on the day. Pop out to short, fly out to left. First pitch to him here is a line drive into left field for a base hit. That's the first hit of the game for Rutgers. No hitter, no more for Chriswell. And it was unfortunate. It seemed like things might be aligning. His, his uh, quick work of some of the earlier hitters and the, the way he had set them all down seemed like he might be able to go the distance with no hits, but today was not the day. Nice little hand here from the crowd at Ray Fisher Stadium for Chriswell. And now you don't have to worry about the hits anymore. Now it's about just attacking these hitters and keeping that zero on the scoreboard. Chris Brito steps to the plate now. Has the go-ahead run, tying run on first base in the form of Desi. Chriswell's first pitch here to Brito. Misses low and in. It's 1-0. It did seem for a second that things were starting to line up there for Chriswell, you mentioned. Almost a shift in the air as well after Wogu came in and made that play. It seemed like Welsh was the guy having the most success against Chriswell today. If you got past him, there was a good shot 
that Kirschbaum could finish this thing. Alas, it was not to be. As Desi, the guy leading Rutgers in batting average, fittingly gets their first hit of the day here in the seventh inning. And it was no fluke either. It was solid contact, hit well out to left field through the gap between the shortstop and third baseman. After a pickoff throw to keep Desi close at first base, Chriswell checks the runner a couple times, fires a 1-0 pitch in there for a strike, stepping out of the box, and a pickoff throw down to first, got him at first base. Great back pick there by Donovan. And his defense coming up huge today, throwing out a runner at second on a steal earlier in the game, and now the back pick at first. Oh, but Rutgers manager... Joe Leterio. Joe Leterio coming out to argue the call. I think he's right on that one, too. He is not happy at all. Arguing with now two umpires. It looked to me like Desi at first base definitely got his hand in there before yeah, the tag. Yeah, I he was safe, too. It was close for sure. But Joe Leterio has got to be careful here. He looks very animated. He might get himself run from this ballgame. He is in the face of Aaron Woodbury at first base. And in a one nothing game, this, that looms large. Not like it's no small. It's no small call. That's for sure. Now yelling at the home plate umpire Timothy Catton. At this point, it almost seems like Leterio wants to get kicked out. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if he says one more thing and gets run from the game later on. As it stands, though, now two outs in the inning, one one count on Brito. This one is spiked in the dirt. Chriswell loses his hat, and the count's two and zero. Or two and one, rather. That's kind of an awkward play all around, also. Brito stepped out of the box, thought he called time in time, but was not granted by Catton. A fastball was in there for a strike before Donovan fired it down to first. Yeah, it seemed a little late to call time to me, so I, I had no problem with that call, but the call at first did seem incorrect. 2 1 pitch in there for a strike, two and two now. What I'm speculating is maybe the hand of Desi either came off the bag or maybe caught. Kerr's glove sliding past right before he hit the bag almost. Kind of how your hand comes up above the bag before you're touching it. Right. 2-2 two -two pitch is fouled off. Just getting a piece is Brito. He fouls it off himself. The count remains 2-2. Two and two. And if Chriswell retires Brito here, it almost feels a little bittersweet, that pickoff, because you erase the one hit that you gave up. Two two pitch, foul back to the screen. Still two and two. And now a little bit of jeering from one of the baseball teams sat here near the front row. A couple guys in the front row kind of dodged their way out of that one. Always funny to see people dive out of the way when there's a net in front of them. But you see that ball coming at you. That's instinct. Was it the Blue Jays game? I believe it was that had the uh, the woman in the first or second row that just didn't move at didn't anything. Didn't flinch at all. My theory is she just didn't see the ball. 2-2 <laughs> two -two pitch. Swung on and missed for strike three. Chriswell picks up his just his second strikeout of the day, or rather third strikeout of the day. Second time on Brito. And we'll head to the bottom of the seventh here, head to the seventh inning stretch, rather. Michigan still leads by a score of one to nothing, despite Chriswell losing the no-hitter. You're listening to WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan baseball, and it's time here at Ray Fisher Stadium for a little bit of take me out to the ball game. Kevin Murray's day is done on the mound for Rutgers. We'll have a new pitcher. We'll get you the name and number in just a second here. But for Murray, a very, very, very good outing for him today. Finishes his final stat line. Six innings worth of work. Three hits. Just gave up one run. It was earned. He walked four. The only real blemish. And six strikeouts on the day for him. No hit batters. No box. No wild pitches throughout the 
24 batters that he faced. Coming into the game, pitch now is going to be number 23, Serafino Brito, senior right-hander. Brito's numbers thus far on the season are as follows. He's pitched 22 times, including a start in there. He is the closer for Rutgers, eight saves on the season. Three and three record, 404 ERA. He's pitched 35 and two thirds innings, by far the most of the non starters for Rutgers. Struck out 35 batters, just about a batter per inning, walked 16. He allows batters to reach at a 240 clip, but does allow a good number of extra base hits in there at times. I'm sure Michigan just happy to get Murray out of the ball game with how good he was in this one today. So it'll be Brito versus now stepping up to the plate to lead things off Blake Nelson. Righty to righty now, first pitch, fastball right at the belt for a strike. Look, it could have been a little bit upstairs, but it is strike one, counts 0-1 now on Nelson. Nelson 0 for 2 on the day, both those coming against the starter, Murray. Strike out on a fly out. 0-1 pitch to him in this at bat is a breaking ball that is low, and the count is now 1-1. You luckily don't have to worry about that big breaking ball from Murray, but Brito certainly good in his own right as the closer. 1-1 one, one pitch is a ground ball towards the left side. Third baseman Sclafani makes the play going over near the shortstop position and throws to first in time for out number one. Yeah, and Brito, who gets about a strikeout in inning, is definitely uh, no small task as a hitter. I mean, Miles Lewis stepping up to the plate now with one gone and no one on in the seventh inning. Lewis has one of three Michigan hits today. That's really more like two Michigan hits today. One of those was essentially gifted by Rutgers and a little miscommunication that fell between the second baseman and the right fielder, Soto and Blum. And Thomas also thrown out trying to advance the second on that same play, so really it was inconsequential what the scoring was. First pitch to Lewis misses low for a ball 1-0. Working strictly out of the stretch is Brito. He comes set right down below the belt really. As the 1-0 pitch is thought about swinging to Miles Lewis and he's called a strike at the belt on the outside part of the plate. Counts 1-1 one one now. Lewis, previously a switch hitter for the Wolverines, batting, batting exclusively from the right side all season long this year. 1-1 one, one pitch to him, check swing, a high pitch that missed, and no swing. So that'll be ball two. Yeah, and a lot of times it just helps to focus on, on your one side. That's a strength uh, from the plate. You can really hone your, hone your approach and uh, improve your standing if you can focus in on one side of the plate. 2-1 pitch to Lewis, misses low, 3 and one's the count now. And Lewis now up to 277 in the batting average department this season. 371 on base percentage, though. Solid numbers, not at the top of the team leaderboards, but certainly a worthy contributor, especially from that four hole that he was hitting in for most of this year. Stands in there, crouched over a bit, the 3-1 pitch to him, misses outside, ball four. And that's how you really know when you have depth, when you have a player who gets on base at a clip high enough and uh, who bats well enough to be your cleanup hitter and then gets moved down to just serve as depth lower in the lineup. It's a really good sign of, of just how deep the team is. K.O. Thomas comes up to the plate now with one gone and a runner on. Lewis on base for the second time today. Back in the fifth when these two were batting, Lewis reached base and then got to second on a... Akeo Thomas ground out to second base after he faked the bunt and then slapped one over that direction. Pick off throw Lewis back in diving. 
Thomas one for two on the day with that aforementioned somewhat of a fluke single. And then a ground out two second. Lewis faking running on the play. The first pitch to Thomas is in there for a strike 0-1. And a little harder for the Michigan runners to distract Rutgers pitching now that they're facing a righty. Not the same view of, uh, of first base when you're towing that side of the rubber. Conversely, a little bit easier to run, perhaps, though. Absolutely, and that suits Michigan's needs here late in a close game, especially with an aggressive head coach, like or aggressive manager, rather, like Eric Boskic. Going on the pitch is Lewis, and it's fouled off to the right side out of play. Count will be 0-2. Right on cue, talking about the aggressiveness of Eric Backich. Sending the runner there on the 0-1 count. little hit-and-run action. And really, that shows faith that Akeo Thomas is going to put the ball in play as well. Yeah, and showing having that kind of faith in your nine-hole hitter is, is really impressive and a good sign. I mean, it makes sense with a player that uh, Backich has experience with. Uh, Akeo Thomas being a senior, obviously. And... Taking his lead is Lewis, not going on this one as the 0-2 pitch misses high. It's 1-2. and two. Thomas worked a long eight-pitch at-bat back in the third, but just a two-pitch at-bat in the fifth. Right now, about finding the middle ground. This will be pitch number four that's upcoming after a pickoff throw. Makes Miles Lewis dive back in safely without a tag. Thomas has had a knack for coming through late in ball games for Michigan this season. Really timing his hits well at the very least. One, two. Pickoff attempt bounces off of Lewis and then off of the foot of the first base umpire Aaron Woodbury and goes out of play, so Lewis will be granted second base. Wild play there. And a costly error for Rutgers on that pickoff throw. Shows the value of having a runner at first because sometimes you get lucky and it's a bad pickoff throw can gift you a base. And now Michigan suddenly threatening in the bottom of the seventh with a runner on second in scoring position. You mentioned officially an error there, I believe, throwing error on the pitcher, Brito. So we got two errors today, both throwing errors by the pitchers. Lewis now taking his lead at second base. Still a 1-2 count on Akeo Thomas. The pitch comes, breaking ball. Doesn't break back to the plate. Stays inside for ball two. Yeah, and that sweeping breaking ball can't, can't have ended up where Brito wanted it to. Really did not break out enough and just stayed too far into the righty Akeo Thomas. Brito comes set. Looks at Lewis a couple times. Both second baseman and shortstop Soto and Welsh both faking off near the bag. As this 2-2 pitch misses high to Thomas, it's 3-2. and two. Thomas now stands in slightly closed stance in that right-handed batter's box. Back foot all the way in the back chalk line near the catcher. Really not really a chalk line here, just a white line in the turf. 3-2 pitch on the way, bounces in the dirt. Thomas is going to go to first base. Lewis is going to move up to third on the play. It'll be runners at the corners for the top of the order and Jordan Wogu. And Michigan getting some fortuitous uh, results from some of these throws by Brio. First the pickoff throw goes off the umpire's foot, granting him second, and then the wild pitch allowing Lewis to advance to third. Just all around really fortuitous for Michigan and putting them in a, in a position to score late, giving a little more insurance to Criswell. I think this might be the end of the day here for Serafino Brito. Slow walk out to the mound by Joe Letario. I didn't see an official move towards the pen, but there is action out there in that Rutgers pen. Yeah. Can't tell if we're going for a pitching change or perhaps just a strategy meeting here. Runners on first and third. You know Ed Coach Eric Back is aggressive. And in a one-run game, every run is going to be that much more important. Might try to pull that little delayed steal, try to get in a pickle going off to second base. Seen that several times over Eric Backage's tenure here in Ann Arbor. A lot of times the solution to that is just don't throw down to second, but again, it's a one-run ball game. You don't want to put another runner in scoring position for the top of this Michigan order. Yeah, that would be disastrous. And 
Rutgers is certainly looking to keep it as close as possible here as they're running out of chances to get back into this one. On the other hand, you also got two straight walks from Brito after getting a ground out to start things. Really a tough situation here for Rutgers. The bright side for the Scarlet Knights, though, is all they need is a ground ball to get out of this inning. Yeah, and with, the, with Thomas on first, it's going to be a little bit of a closer play at second, but still make, but still doable. And with Wogu running from home, also probably be a close play on the turn. He does hit the ball hard, though, and that's what you want in a double play ball. Wogu, so far on the day, walked twice. He saw eight straight balls out of his first two at-bats, and the first strike he saw... All day in the fifth, he lined it directly at the third baseman's Clefani. First pitch of this at-bat against Brito was a breaking ball in the dirt. Counts 1-0. And, oh. and Brito really struggling to command his balls right now, it seems. It seems. Excuse me. And, you know, he as a pitcher who can get you a strikeout, that's certainly the most desired outcome for Rutgers here. Faking on the pitch was a KO Thomas towards second in the Breaking ball caught the outside corner. Counts one and one now on Wogu. First strike that Wogu's looked at today. Jesse Franklin stands on deck if Michigan can get there without a double play ball here. And Jordan Brewer waiting in the hole, the only man to drive in a run today. Big swing and a miss there on the 1-1 one -one pitch from Wogu, and he's now down in the count one and two. Good pitch by Brito, moving a bit away from the power of Wogu. Forced him to pull off a little bit as Wogu chokes up a little bit on the bat. Brito checks the runner at first base, comes set. Now 1-2 pitch. Call oh, strike three. A little two seam action ran back over the outside corner. Wogu goes down looking. Brito's first strike out of the day is a huge one. Now there's two outs in the inning. Runner still at the corners. Jesse Franklin coming to the plate. And that's massive for Rutgers now. Ground ball gets him out of this inning and keeps it a one run game. So that could that could be massive in the outcome of this game as it's obviously gonna be much easier for Rutgers to come back with a slimmer margin as Jesse Franklin steps up that for Michigan. First time Franklin's facing a righty today. We'll see if that makes a difference. His breaking ball misses low, 1-0. Franklin struck out back in the first, but has since walked in the next two plate appearances for him. Even advancing to third, back in the third, but eventually being stranded there. He's got insurance run just 90 feet away if he can keep the inning going. Brito is ready, 1-0 pitch. Fastball on the outside corner for a strike, 1-1. One one. That's another case right there of McNamara behind the plate pretty much buying a call for his pitcher by where he set up and where he held that pitch. Yeah, he's been really valuable for Rutgers today, and you can see Jesse Franklin kind of talk, looking back at the umpire asking, you know, was that how close was that to being a ball, and trying to get the scoop on that pitch. 1-1 one, one pitch now, Franklin, right off the end of the bat and back to the screen. I was in the, almost the exact same spot was that pitch. So after it was called a strike, Franklin knew he probably should have taken a hack at it. He did, fouled it off. It's 1-2 and two now. Big pitch upcoming here. I almost feel the momentum might swing a little bit here in this seventh inning. Rutgers finally getting a hit in the top half of this inning. And now in the bottom half, a chance to work out of a jam for Brito. He checks a KO Thomas as he comes set. One, two pitch. Off the end of the bat towards shortstop fielding as well. She'll take it to the second base bag himself and beat Thomas there for out number three. So Rutgers gets out of that jam. No runs, no hits, no errors, but there was two men left on base for the Wolverines that inning. We'll head to the eighth. Michigan still leads Rutgers by just one run. It's one nothing here on WCBN Sports Broadcast of Michigan Baseball. And a great chance for Michigan to try and get some insurance there for Criswell as they had two runners on and the top of their order at the plate, but unfortunately not able to add to their lead and Criswell will have to stay perfect, or to stay uh, scoreless rather, to keep Michigan in the lead. He's been real close to perfect today, has Criswell. 
He's faced one batter over the minimum through seven innings. And that was because of an error that he committed trying to record the last out of the sixth. Fiery one wide at first base on a pitch that was bunted right back to him. Took until that top half of the 7th for Rutgers to record their first hit against Chriswell. We were getting close to that no-hitter watch. Kind of felt like it could come on a sharp line drive single back last inning. And did that. However, Desi, who did record the hit, was quickly erased on a back pick from Joe Donovan. Still keeping it a very efficient day for Chriswell. And you have to imagine that as long as he can stay efficient and stay effective, head coach Eric Backage is going to leave him in here as there's no no movement in the Michigan pen at the moment. A couple of players out in that direction, but, yeah, no one throwing, no one on the mounds or anything along that line of thinking. Chris Rell threw seven innings thus far, 69 pitches thus far. Anytime you can get those quick outs, you're going to have a nice day on the mound. First pitch here to Tyler McNamara. Swing and a miss on the breaking ball. 0-1 is the count. McNamara 0-2 on the day. Ground out to third. Strikeout in which he was then subsequently tagged on the drop third strike by Donovan. Quishrell gets his sign working quickly. 0-1 pitch. Fastball misses off the plate away. Outside. It's 1-1. One that's kind of the difference you see there between McNamara and Donovan, the two guys both in that circle now. Donovan not quite as adept or as apt at framing those pitches on the outside corner as you see from McNamara, who's a couple of years his senior. 1-1 one, one pitch, breaking ball, misses low, maybe a bit away as well, and the count is now 2-1. and one. Yeah, and for the lack of value that Donovan provides from a framing perspective, he probably makes up for it with his arm. That's a... Uh, Nice defensive aspect to have behind the plate there for Michigan, although you'd like to have catcher buying you some strikes. Just a sophomore as Donovan got time to grow into that role. It's a 2-1 pitch. is called strike right at the knees. McNamara doesn't agree, but the count's 2-2. Two and two. McNamara, very tall for a catcher, 6-2, out of East Brunswick, New Jersey. Chokes up on the bat now in that right-handed batter's box. Very open stance, 2-2 two -two pitch to him. Foul off to the right side. That gets out of play. And the count's 2-2 two and two again. On deck, Victor Valderrama. And then Carmen Sclafani also do up in this inning. Already one of the longer at-bats for Chris Well today. As we pitch number 6. Winds up 2-2 two -two pitch. This one's grounded towards short. Blomgren makes a diving attempt, but it gets into center field for a base hit. Good effort by Blomgren there on the dive. Just couldn't quite reach the ball. And uh, nice contact there by McNamara on that on that pitch. Just stuck in there. That bat fouled a tough pitch off on 2-2. Two -two. And yeah, like you said, took a pitch that was maybe a little bit on the inside part of the plate and put it right back up the middle. Victor Valderrama knows about putting the ball on the ground back up the middle. He was somewhat robbed of a base hit his last at bat. Hit a sharp ground ball that bounced off the foot of Chriswell on the mound. Chriswell recovered and tossed him out. Well, Dom also has a ground out to short on the day. Michigan would love for him to hit another ground ball here. Checking the runner, McNamara is Chriswell now. Short lead at first base. Square on to bunt now is Valderrama. And he bunts it over the screen and into the stands. Not making a play. Is anybody over there? And the count's going to be 0-1. We haven't seen a ball go over near the dogs today. That that was my one thing is the ball gets over there. What's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's going to be a mad dash by all the dogs for the for the baseball. So Got to hold them all back. Yeah. Blake Nelson at third base now, creeping in a bit after Valderrama squared around on the first pitch. Middle of the infield, still a double play depth for Michigan. Kerr holding the runner on. Nelson now charges in as he's showing bunt all the way as Valderrama goes right back to Chris while on the mound. He throws the second. In, not in time. Plomgren then tried to throw to first and tossed it 
late and a little high. Okay, Thomas jumped up and grabbed it, but safe all around on that one. Maybe not the smartest play for Chris Hill to throw it a second. Normally that's the catcher's call. But I couldn't tell you. I couldn't really hear anything being yelled out. Yeah, I didn't hear anything yelled by Donovan. Hard to say if he did yell, but that's tough, especially because it was such a good bunt. Just not quite enough time for Criswell to nail the runner at second, and if that was bunted maybe a little harder and Nelson gets to it, he might have time to make the play at second, but just not enough, and the smarter play would have been the first to get the first out of the inning. So officially a sacrifice, bunt, and a fielder's choice for Valderrama. Pitching coach Chris Fetter makes his way out to the mound as now there's action in the Michigan bullpen, a couple arms up. A little bit of an obstructed view over here, so I can't tell you exactly who that is out there. One of them does appear to be Willie Weiss, if my eyes are not deceiving me. And I think the other one is Angelo Smith, but I also can't quite see around that pole. Just see a lefty flinging that ball around. Righty and a lefty in the pen. Chris Fetter ends his mound visit with Chris Well and the rest of the Michigan infield. They all retreat back to their positions, and Rutgers with a serious chance to tie this game up. The tying runs at second in scoring position with nobody out in the inning. Now Carmen Sclafani comes to the plate. Like most of these Rutgers hitters, 0 for on the day, 0 for 2 in this case. Pop out to first base and a ground out to third. Kerr playing in at first base, expecting a bunt perhaps again. Trying to put two runners in scoring position. That would be the tying and go-ahead runs. Nelson sticking near third base to make a play perhaps over there. Bunt attempt pulled back as that one gets back to the screen. They don't even have to worry about a sacrifice bunt here. Both runners move up into scoring position, and the count's 1-0. and And really a nightmare scenario for Michigan here, removing any chance of a double play with uh, both runners advancing on the wild pitch or pass ball. And now Michigan with no outs, allowing two Rutgers uh, base runners to move into scoring position. It, it looked like Donovan was just trying to hop out of his stance too early there. Yeah, he almost moved the out of the way of the ball, in a way. Now Michigan's got a reset here. 1-0 count on Sclafani. Tying run 90 feet away. Go ahead run on second with nobody out in the inning here in the eighth. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball in the dirt. Count is 1-1 one one now. Are you praying on that over-aggressiveness there? You get two runners in scoring position. You can see the lead in front of you. Chris Well got Scafani to chase down low. Yeah, Scafani maybe wanting to be the hero a little bit, going after that ball. Good job by Chris Well of just getting a whiff and getting back into the getting back into the at bat. Scafani, 218 average on the air, 317 on base percentage, but not a ton of walks. And he watches a strike catch the outside corner at the knees. One and two's the count. McNamara's at third, Valderrama's at second. Michigan leads 1-0 here in the top of the eighth inning. Nobody out for Sclafani, but he's down in the count 1-2 and two against the Wolverine right-hander Jeff Criswell. Criswell comes set now. Gets his grip. Joe Donovan setting up low, 1-2 pitch, hit in the air towards center field. This will be enough to drive the run in. Jordan Brewer makes the grab and fires a ball in towards third. Try to cut down the runner there. One hop throw in time. And that is a questionable call at third by the third base umpire. John, Someone's getting kicked John out here. Coons. It looks like, yeah, it looks like the Rutgers coach likely getting a run here after some complaining. It looked, yeah, again, like that was a rough call there. It looked like he beat the tag yet again. Yeah, he looked he looked pretty well safe. And Rucker, <laughs> Rucker's head coach is just, he came out, walked past the umpire, almost as if to gather his thoughts before launching into a rant. And now he's just laying into third base umpire John Coons. So a double play for Michigan, but the game is tied.
Joe Letario still out there arguing with John Coons at third base. He started off as the third base coach arguing. I don't know who officially coaches third base for them out there. But immediately after the call was made, he was in the face of John Coons. Until Joe Letario came out and Coons kind of told him, I'll talk to your manager, relax. And still not kicked out is Letario. I'm very surprised. Yeah. Maybe he realized this <laughs> is a mistake and then just kind of accepted the, the yelling. Or maybe he just, I don't know. He's had words for Timothy Catton behind the plate, too, every time he's come off the field. We are tied 1-1, one one, though, after that RBI sack fly by Sclafani. Kevin Blum steps up and bounces one fair down the left field line into the left field corner. Chasing it down is Wogu. Blum's going to make his way to second. He'll have a stand-up double here with two outs in the eighth. And Chriswell starting to look vulnerable. Facing the bottom of this Rutgers order. Not a lot of really uh, potent hitters here, but Chriswell running into trouble nonetheless. And that ball was just barely fair. Kind of the chopper off to the left field and the bounce behind the, the third base and uh, inside the line just barely. And Nelson fingertips away from getting that ball also. If not on a turf field, he probably makes that play. Yeah, absolutely. That extra bounce makes it tough for any infielder. David Soto at the plate now. A chance to give Rutgers the lead. A big moment for this freshman second baseman. That go-ahead run at second base. Facing Chris Hall for the third time in the ball game. Chris Hall looks back at second at Blum. First pitch breaking ball misses low. Thinking about swinging with Soto, but he held up. It's 1-0. So 0 for 2 in the day, ground out to second. And he was the one that bunted back to Chriswell, and Chriswell fired wide at first base for the error. So Soto has been on base once today. Looking to do so again, keep this inning going. Breaking ball, misses low and away. It's 2-0 and now. And earlier on, Chriswell getting getting behind and counts 2-0 was starting to come a pattern, and he got away from it for a while, but starting to come back to it in a place where it might actually come back to bite him. It's Weiss and Kaiser warming up in the bullpen for Michigan. Weiss, the righty, the closer, really, for Michigan this season, and Kaiser, one of Eric Backage's favorite setup and lead in inning guys to go to. 2-0 pitch, fastball on the inside corner for a strike. Be huge here for Chris Hall to get out of this, only allowing the one run. Got help from his defense there with a good throw from Jordan Brewer. We can argue the call at third base all we want. And Rutgers can as well, but you can't deny that was a strong one-hot throw from Jordan Brewer. Yeah, really excellent online and had enough power to get there almost in time. Chris Well comes set at the belt. 2-1 pitch, misses low, it's 3-1. and one. You don't want to keep this going for the top of the order. Let him see Chris Well a fourth time around, should Chris Well get there, that is. Yeah, walking a 113 hitter is not... Not the uh, best thing to do here, <laughs> that's for sure. Chris Rose ready now, comes set. Just looks back at the runner, Blum. Stares at the runner, Blum. Now throwing the three-run pitch. Miss inside, ball four. Walks the nine-hitter Soto, does Chris well. Puts two runners on now. Back to the top of the order for Mike Neister. And back is not... Backage not budging from the... Oh, there he goes. Right on cue. <laughs> that will be the end of the day here for Jeff Criswell. But for him, season and career high in innings pitch. He went seven and two-thirds. And he will get a huge hand here from the Michigan faithful. People standing up now. It is Willie Weiss coming into the game. He grabs the ball, and now Ray Fisher Stadium rising to their feet for Jeff Criswell. Absolutely fantastic day from the sophomore. He held a no-hitter into the seventh inning. Career high in innings pitched. Didn't set a career high when it came to strikeouts or anything of that. But a fantastic performance regardless. Yeah, really sound pitching, especially from an efficiency standpoint. 
didn't waste any time going after hitters and allowing some contact be, to be made, but Michigan defense held, held fast behind him and made some good plays uh, to ultimately keep this game moving quickly and, and uh, hold Michigan the lead for the vast majority of the, of the game. So Willie Weiss will stride into the ball game for Michigan. Eric Backage not messing around, going to his closer, Weiss. Weiss has pitched in 16 games this season. Eight of those have resulted in saves. He's 2-2 two two with a 3.00 ERA on the button. 27 innings pitched, 32 strikeouts over one inning. Problem for him is he does lose control a little bit, has walked 13 in those 27 innings. Opponents hit 198 against him, along with four home runs notably. So prone to giving up the long ball and the occasional walk. But also capable of being unhittable at times is Weiss, and that's the reason he's the closer for the Wolverines. I'll have to work his way out of a jam here. Runners on first and second, but two gone in the inning. He faces the top of the order for the Scarlet Knights. And on top of the order that has not seen a lot of success so far, although they have made some good contact against against the starter, Criswell. We'll see if they're able to continue making contact and maybe find a hole against Weiss here. Neister's 0 for 3 on the day, flew out to center, grounded to third, and then flew out to right. As Weiss fires in his last warm-up pitch, and Neister will make his way up to the plate. Weiss takes a quick walk around the mound. I figure this might be the most critical at-bat of the ball game. Rutgers has... Probably the man they want at the plate in Neister. Michigan has the man they want on the mound in Weiss. First pitch the at bat, breaking ball doesn't break, stays up high, it's 1 0. And just that first pitch of the out in for Weiss, that ball not breaking at all. Got to see if he can rein in that breaking ball and command it better throughout this appearance. Looked like a breaking ball out of the hand, but also could have just misfired, had a bad grip on a ball. 1 0 pitch. Looks like he went with the breaking ball again. That missed low and away. It's 2-0 now. And there's that same spot that Chris Well continued to miss during his start. Home plate umpire Timothy Cadden being pretty consistent so far today. Two zero pitch. Missed ball three now. And that three ball and and fastball just got a little away from him and and ended up up in the zone as a ball. Neister takes a step out of the box. Probably not swinging here, given Weiss's misfire on his first three pitches since coming into the ball game. If he does it a fourth time, the bases will be loaded. 3-0 pitch. Fastball called, strike on the outside corner. Counts 3-1 and one now. And Cad maybe expanding the zone a little bit on that one. Looked like it might have been a ball. It's that... 3-0 auto strike sometimes you get if it's close enough. Yeah, definitely. Weiss looking in at Donovan, gets the sign. Comes set, glove out in front of him, checks the runner, Blum at second. 3-1 pitch. Misses low and in, ball four. So Weiss walks the first guy. He sees after coming into the ball game, and the bases are now loaded for Kevin Welsh. Welsh has had probably the best swings of the day of any Rutgers hitter across his at-bats, but nothing to show for it. 0 for 3. Welsh, a career 6-6-7 six, six, hitter with the bases loaded. So it's probably a small sample because it looks like it's, that's about exactly two-thirds. I'm guessing it Sounds about had, right. Probably hasn't had too many too many opportunities, but in those limited opportunities, he's played well. He's uh, made good contact. Welsh, the switch hitter, still batting from the right side. Pitch in the dirt, skips away a little bit, but Joe Donovan sprints over, slides, and keeps the runner at third. That would have been huge, but the count is 1-0 on Welsh. Good hustle from Donovan there, just getting that ball. Didn't, dri didn't dribble too far away from him, so not far to go. Welsh, the junior out of Columbus, New Jersey. Weiss, the freshman out of Portland, Oregon. Weiss looks in for the sign. Gets it, comes set. 1-0 pitch. Fastball misses high and away. It's 2-0. Weiss's control just not there right now at all. 
If you're Rutgers, are you taken here till you get a strike at this point? Absolutely. I think that probably the best way to try and get this lead is just let him walk in a run, which could, by all accounts could absolutely happen with a 2-0 count as third baseman Blake Nelson goes to Council Weiss briefly there. I think that's an absolutely uh, probably the, the best move. Just let him take. Critical point in the ball game here. We said last at bat was probably most important. After the walk, this at bat's now the most important of the ball game. 2 0 pitch. Fastball misses, low and in, ball three. And good take there by Welsh. I mean, nothing, nothing better to do here with the bases loaded late in the game against a relief pitcher who hasn't yet recorded an out than just let the pressure build and just let him undo himself, which is currently what's happening. We'll see if Weiss can rein it in here. Still double barrel action in the Michigan bullpen again now. Kaiser still warming up. Can't quite see the number on the other pitcher warming up. It is a righty. If I was speculating at all, might take a guess and say that could be either Blake Beers or maybe Weisenberger, perhaps. 3-0 pitch in there for a strike, 3-1. Zero room for error here for Weiss. Are you taking again here if you're Welsh? That's the question. Yeah, I think it would be kind of poor judgment to, to give your hitter the green light here with how inconsistently Weiss is throwing the ball, or how consistently out of the zone he's throwing the ball, rather. 3-1. Fastball called, strike two on the outside corner. And a big roar from the crowd as, he, as Weiss delivers here. Only a strike away from getting out of a really big jam. Michigan dugout, players jumping up on that top railing now. Crowd into it. Three and two pitch coming. Two outs, so all three runners on base will be on the move. Weiss delivers. Call! Strike three on the outside corner with the fastball. And home plate umpire Timothy Cadden pausing a little bit, a little bit before making that call, and Welsh not happy with it as he walks back to the, to the dugout. Looked like it might have been a little off the plate away, but that corner's been open against lefties for most of the day for Catton. Yeah, Catton is nothing if not consistent, and he's been giving them that call and continues to do so. So a huge strikeout there limits the damage here in the eighth. Rutgers does score one run to tie things up. They do that on two hits. No errors for the Wolverines that inning, but they did leave the bases loaded. Three left on base there. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth. We're all tied up right back where we started. It's 1-1 on WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan baseball. And just composure from Willie Weiss there after falling behind 3-0 with the bases loaded, the go-ahead run on third base. Uh, that's something else for a freshman. Absolutely. A really high-pressure spot to have to deal with as an inex inexperienced pitcher. And he handled it well, even though it looked like he wasn't going to after the first few batters he faced. Rutgers, I believe it looks like they're going to stick with Serafino Brito in this game. Brito had a little bit of trouble last inning, walked a couple batters, resulted in a first and third situation. Yeah, Michigan looking to utilize the middle of its order here to take the lead heading into the top of the ninth and they should have a pretty good chance considering uh, Brio Sane in here who struggled a little bit last half inning he pitched he was able to work out of it without giving up a run but as you mentioned it's the heart of the Michigan order three four and five Brewer Kerr and Blomgren if this is the time for Wolverines to retake that lead these are the guys you want at the plate Brewer so far on the day, one for three. Strikeout in a fielder's choice, bookend, an RBI double all the way back in the third inning. First pitch from Brito is a good breaking ball that catches the outside corner for a strike. And that's a place where a lot of Michigan hit, um, pitchers have been missing today quite a bit. Interesting to see Cat and give him the call. It looked like it was probably close enough. A one pitch. Swing and a miss at a high fastball from Brewer. It's 0-2 now. Brewer's been down the count 0-2, I believe, in every single one of his at-bats. And maybe just getting a little too power-hungry, looking for that next home run. Could be hard to resist taking a big cut.
Cooper waggling that bat a little bit. 0-2 pitch to him. Breaking ball low and away. Lays off of it. It's 1-2. and two. And no reason to chase 0-2 there. You know, it's probably going to be some junk that they're trying that is trying to induce a chase. Good job laying off there by Brewer. Rest the bat on his shoulder. Now almost Ben Zobrist-esque moving those hands around. 1-2 pitch hit high in the air towards center field. Going back now near the track, near the wall. as the center fielder Valderrama and makes the grab on the track. And ball that ball looked really good off the bat. Roped into center field by Jordan Brewer. Had the crowd gasping, hooing and eyeing as it looked like it was going to be a home run, but just not quite enough on it. That ball kept carrying and carrying and carrying. The center fielder Valderrama looked like he had a beat at first and then kept going back farther and farther and farther. So he made that grab right in front of that big batter's eye in center field. So one out in the inning, albeit a long first out of the inning. Probably about a 385 foot out. Will lead to Jimmy Kerr stepping into the plate with no one on. Righty to lefty first pitch. Check swing. He went around more like a two-thirds of a swing there from Kerr. And Counts on one. And these high pitches from Brito fooling these Michigan hitters, both Kerr and Brewer, chasing on high pitches. Brito comes set, works exclusively out of the stretch. A one pitch, fastball misses high and away. It's one and one. Rutgers not shifting against Kerr, but the second baseman Soto is back What would in what would be the Outfield grass, the first baseman Brito just about in the same depth. Just a couple steps away from that green turf. So 1-1 one, one pitch missed high. It's 2-1. Kerr's 0 for 3 on the day. He's flown out to both left and right. And he struck out in his last at-bat in the sixth. Says his first look at Brito. As it will be with every hitter until Blake Nelson. 2-1 pitch. Fastball. Just off the plate away, maybe a bit low. Very similar spot to what Willie Weiss shut the call on, but a little bit lower than the one that Weiss threw. So count three and one now. Kerr trying to start a little something here in the eighth to retake the lead for Michigan. Middle of Michigan order hasn't really done much yet today. It can only be a matter of time until they do. Good chance here. Bat waggling, 3-1 pitch. Foul off to the left side. That'll get up and out of play. And the count is now full. Identical stats in the line score for these teams. Both one run, three hits, one error. And those errors, not really impactful errors either, They're both erased quickly. One on a pickoff throw for Rutgers and one by Chris Well in which the batter was, or the next batter was subsequently retired. 3-2 pitch, off the outside corner, ball four. Looked like he went breaking ball there and didn't quite get it back to the corner. But again, a very similar spot to where Weiss just got that strikeout call. Perhaps Cat behind the plate was really feeling that energy back when everybody's cheering on their feet. Yeah. And a good job there by, by Kerr of taking that last pitch for a walk. It'll be Jack Blomgren now coming up to the plate, looks in the dugout to get a sign. He's 0 for 3 on the day. A strikeout lookins, followed by two ground outs, two short. Does not want to hit one on the ground to short here. First pitch to him is a line drive. One hopper to short. Diving play by Welsh. Goes to second for one. Relay throw to first. In time. Double play. What a play by Welsh at shortstop. And his third ground out of the day to short. Probably the most difficult play for Welsh, but a really well made one as, he, as Rutgers is able to turn to and get out of the inning. Save what would be a base hit and probably send the go-ahead run to third base on that one. Yeah, that was a really well-hit ball by Blomgren. But just not hard enough to force Welsh into a bad play. So for Michigan, that inning ends up being a clean inning for Rutgers. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. At the end of eight innings... We're tied up going into crunch time. It's one-to-one, -one, Michigan and Rutgers on the official student radio broadcast for Michigan baseball. You're listening to WCBN Sports. Austin Falco, Owen Swanson on the call for you today. 
A gorgeous day here at Ray Fisher Stadium. Bark at the Park. Still a good amount of dogs hanging out in Section 1. Yeah, some have left, but there's still quite, an amount, quite a few paws left here at Ray Fisher Stadium. I'd like to see the dogs get into it a little bit more. Maybe <laughs> hear a little more barking. Yeah, should have been on their feet barking as well when everybody <laughs> yeah. in the stadium got louder. <laughs> We're going to have a chance for fans to get into this game for sure, headed down the stretch. We're into the ninth inning all tied up, and it's always a recipe for an engaging finish to a ball game. Absolutely. Got to wonder who the, the late game hero will be for Michigan as Donovan, Nelson, and Lewis will head up in the bottom of the ninth. But for now, it's Weiss in the top of the ninth. And Weiss resumes his action, working out of the windup now against Tim Desi. First pitch fastball inside, counts 1-0. We'll see if a clean inning and working out of the windup does anything for Weiss's control. Weiss puts the glove in front of his face, looks in for the sign, brings the glove down to his belt and then back up near his shoulder as he fires. This 1-0 pitch that's fouled into the bullpen and causes some scattering of Michigan players. The count is 1-1. One one. Tommy Henry diving like a boxer, <laughs> avoiding a punch to get out of the way of that foul ball. Weiss gets a sign from Donovan. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Breaking ball misses high. It's 2-1 and one now. Weiss hasn't been able to snap that breaking ball and get it down and if he does, he misses it well off the plate or well low and away. Yeah, he's missing a high by a pretty large margin. Have to wonder if that's a curveball not breaking well enough down or if he's just letting the ball get out of his hands too early. 2-1 pitch. Fastball off the outside corner. 3-1 and one the count now. Desi, we had the first hit for Rutgers. Took until the seventh inning. He was then erased by a back pick from Joe Donovan. Before that, he got a pop out and a fly out. So one for three on the day. Looking to get on base for a second time here and get a ninth inning rally started for Rutgers to try to take the lead. 3-1 pitch, fastball, misses low, ball four. And, Kaiser st and uh, Weiss still struggling with the walks. Gotta wonder why his, why his command isn't there today. Might be just an instance of uh, him being a little erratic with his command, like you mentioned, prone to walking people at times. Eric Backage glancing down at the bullpen for a second there now giving his signs into his infield in terms of what they want to do in case of a steal. Who's covering the bag, what depth they want him at, all being sorted out by the, the dugout at this moment. Now that's sorted out, Donovan squats behind the plate, gives his sign into Weiss. Weiss comes set, squaring on a bunt is Brito. He pulls back as a fastball misses high, it's 1-0. And, and there's Weiss missing high again. And Chris Brito's your cleanup hitter for Rutgers, but not terribly surprising to see him square around given, first of all, that Rutgers has a chance to take the lead with that runner on first. And also the day that Brito's had hasn't had much success. Couple strikeouts and a fly out. Squaring around and now pulling back as a pitch missed low and away was Brito, and the count is 2-0. Nelson charging hard at third. If he gets a bunt down towards Nelson, he's going to be able to throw to second. So for Brito, the idea here is, first of all, wait for a ball in the strike zone, obviously. And second of all, you definitely want to push that towards that first base side. Yeah, Work. absolutely. As long as he can get it away from Nelson, probably not going to be a play at second. Not showing bunt this time as Brito as the 2-0 pitch is a fastball strike. Looking down for a sign is Brito. We'll see if the bunt's back on or whether they're going to stick with letting Brito swing away and try to keep this inning going. Now squaring around a bunt before the pitch is thrown when Weiss comes set. Here it comes. Bunted right in front of the plate. Donovan's going to field and have to throw to first with it. He does for out number one. Moving up is Desi on the play. And Donovan making the safe decision to go to first. Looked like he might have had time to get the runner at second with a strong, hard, accurate throw, but it would have been a close play. 
taking the safe play at first and considering the considering Weiss's problems with the command right now, it's probably the better decision just to take the out. You had to figure maybe even Chris Wells' throw earlier that was late to second base, maybe a factor in just taking the safe play there and going to first for Donovan. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that one that one play caused them to get into such a jam that trying to avoid the same jam in a, in a late game situation would probably look pretty appealing to Donovan. And who knows, Weiss could very well walk this batter and then force the next one into a double play. So it could work out. Alex Russo is the pinch runner now for Rutgers, representing the tying run, or rather the go-ahead run out there at second base. He takes over for Tim Desi, presumably just staying in that designated hitter spot. First pitch misses just low, maybe a bit inside to Tyler McNamara, the catcher. It's 1-0. McNamara glancing over for signs now as well. Wouldn't think you'd have any uh, bunt play on or anything here. It's a breaking ball. Catches the outside corner this time at the knees for strike one. Yeah, McNamara with a single earlier today and a pretty respectable batting average at 250. Sitting right at the Mendoza line. He's probably not the person you want bunting, although... I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if, if they tried to manufacture a run in a close game here late. McNamara, one for three, ground out, strike out, single. Came around to score the only run for Rutgers. He is absolutely fooled on a breaking ball from Weiss and takes an ugly hack at strike two. A nice job by Weiss starting to kind of settle in and get that ball to break better. He's got a one-two count now on McNamara. Weiss looks in, comes set, doesn't even check the runner at second as the one-two pitch breaking ball called, strike three. Great pitch there from Weiss with the front door breaking ball to get McNamara looking, and now there's two outs in the inning. And so far the scouting report on Weiss holding true, definitely being a little erratic and walking some people, but strikeout saving the day as he's able to get some clutch strikes and, and keep Michigan tied with Rutgers. Victor Valderrama comes to the plate now. Valderrama officially on the day 0 for 2. But he did reach base when he tried to lay down the sacrifice bunt, and Michigan could not retire the runner at second. First pitch breaking ball here just misses inside against Valderrama. Weiss trying to go right back to the well, what he just struck out McNamara with. Should Valderrama reach, it'll be Carmen Sclafani, the only RBI holder for Rutgers today. That would get a chance to either give Rutgers the lead or extend the Rutgers lead, depending on how this at-bat goes. 1-0 pitch to Valderrama, spiked in the dirt, gets away from Donovan. Russo's going to be able to move up on the play as that one went off towards the first baseline. It's now just 90 feet away is the go-ahead run. And we've seen some balls get away from Donovan here. That's going to be something to watch, especially in such a close game. And now with the runner at third, hopefully uh, for Michigan, Weiss reigns in his command a little bit. It makes it a little easier for Donovan to keep the ball in front of him so as not to allow the uh, winning run to plate in this half inning. And Donovan seems to kind of go through stretches sometimes for Michigan where at times he's a brick wall and he lets up very little pass balls and wild pitches, and then there's times where he kind of gets in a groove of balls kind of bouncing away from him and getting away, as we've seen today. That one certainly helped by Weiss spiking it well in front of the plate, but this 2-0 pitch is on the, ins on the outside corner, rather, for a strike. 2-1 and one the count. And you can only expect more consistency as, as time progresses for the sophomore backstop. <laughs> Weiss looks in for the sign. Russo taking a decent lead over at third base. And checking Nelson, making sure he's not trying to pick off the runner. 2-1 pitch, fouled back behind the plate, out of play. Counts now 2-2. Two 2-2, and two. Two, and two, two outs here in the top of the ninth. Go ahead run for Rutgers at third base in this 1-1 ball game. Weiss versus Valderrama. Crowd getting into it now.
Weiss comes set. Checks the runner. 2-2 pitch. Just getting a piece of that one off the end of the bat and then off of the glove of Donovan was Valderrama there, staying alive at 2-2. Two and, two. and nice job by Valderrama staying in, staying in this. With a 2-2 count, no reason to let any close balls go. Just keep fighting them off. And this is the time you want to try and seize the lead. I'm not mistaken. Aside from the sack bunt, that's the only person to make contact against Weiss out of the five batters. 2-2 two -two pitch. Fastball misses just inside. And the fans are not happy, but I think I, that Cadden made the right call there. The ball seemed in to me. I agree. It looked like it did miss well in off the plate. Kato Thomas started to jog off the field, but went back to his spot. He shaded over near the left side a bit, playing closer to the second base bag. Ready for a 3-2 pitch, though. Breaking ball just misses, maybe a bit higher inside there. I think it was a bit high. Ball four there puts the runner on first base. Runners will be at the corners now for Carmen Sclafani. And Weiss not able to get the strike in the full count uh, in the uh, clutch situation there. Thankful for, thankfully for him, there's an open base this time, so didn't matter quite as much. Eric Beck is showing a lot of faith in the freshman, leaving him out there despite walking three of now what is the six batters he's faced. Yeah, a little bit of a trial by fire. I mean, he's been using Weiss in these situations for a significant amount of the year, but it still shows a lot of faith in, faith in the freshman to keep him in here in the situation. Scafani batting for the second straight inning, takes a pitch low on the fastball. It's 1-0. And the action in the bullpen a little bit inconsistent. Looks like whoever's warming up is just about ready to come in, and they, they're probably giving Weiss his last batter if I were to to be guess, guessing on that. It does look like it's Kaiser out there, ready to come in should he be needed. Scafani 0 for 2 on the day, but had the big sacrifice fly in the eighth inning. Resulted in double play, but drove in the run that tied the ball game. 1-0 pitch, breaking ball, strike. And once again, nice job by Weiss, getting that ball to actually break. He's really gotten that, he's really reined in that pitch over the course of this outing. We said he struggles with walks, but also can be unhittable, and part of the reason is he comes with that fastball in the low to mid-90s oh, and has that big breaking ball, and he can command that breaking ball. It's a deadly duo. 1-1 one, one pitch. Here's that breaking ball chopped over to third and just fouled on the line there. Could have been a disaster for Michigan had that one snuck inside that third base bag. Yeah, that one was just chopped too high for Nelson and hit too slowly for Wogu to come in quickly on it, so that could have been... Quite the disaster for Michigan. Thankfully, just foul. As it stands, it's one and two now. Signs being given out by the third base coach for the Scarlet Knights. The batter Sclafani is looking over, but really nothing you can give the batter sign-wise at this point. You got two strikes on you with two outs. You're just trying to put the ball in play if it's close. Or at the very least, stay alive. Put bat on ball. Scafani can find a hole somewhere. He'll give Rutgers the lead and be the hero of the day. Weiss comes set. 1-2 pitch. Runner going from first. Ball spiked in the dirt. Stopped by Donovan. Moving up will be Valderrama to second base. And the count will go to 2-2. Two and two. And that's a costly, costly pitch by Weiss there. It looked like he was reaching back to try and pull, put a little something extra on it and blow it by the, by the batter, but... Just held onto it too long and muscled it into the, into the ground in front of the hitter, allowing the runner to advance. And now a base hit scores two and makes it even harder for Michigan to come back in the, in the bottom of the ninth if need be. Valderrama credited with the steal, his fourth of the season. Puts him in scoring position. Weiss comes set. 2-2 two -two pitch. Breaking ball. Check swing. Did not go around. Fans getting restless here in Ray Fisher as they beg for calls. Count is full yet again. Second straight batter. Third batter overall that Weiss has run the count full on. And the crowd getting back into it now. Big pitch upcoming here. 3-2. Two. two outs. Runners on second and third. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Strike three on the breaking ball. Fist pump from Joe Donovan behind the plate. 
Willie Weiss walks off the mound, and Michigan's going to have a chance to win it in the bottom of the ninth. Once again, Willie Weiss coming through when he absolutely needs to and just making a pitch. Really good ball there to get a whiff and get Michigan out of the inning. So for Rutgers, no runs, no hits, no errors committed that inning by the Wolverines, but Rutgers strands two, both of them in scoring position. We're going to the bottom of the ninth. Michigan with a chance to win it here. We're all tied up one-to-one -one at Ray Fisher Stadium between the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and the Michigan Wolverines here on the official student radio broadcast for Michigan baseball. We're WCBN Sports. Thank you for tuning in today and all weekend long for this three-game series. The first two games, uh, to say, to, to put it simply, uh, not quite as competitive as this one. 8-3 uh, game on Friday. That was 8 nothing until the ninth inning. And a 10-1 victory yesterday for Michigan. This one has been hotly contested from the get-go, really led by the outing of the two starting pitchers. Yeah, without great outings from both starting pitchers, Criswell and Murray, we would not have been in this position, and they certainly were in this position two days ago and the day before when Michigan really blew out Rutgers both times. So now it's going to come down to the depth of Michigan and, and uh, just seeing if that, could, if that order can come through in the clutch. A little bit different look for the team uh, in the final game of the series, but uh, if they're able to come through in kind of a different so situation, then they'll be rewarded with a sweep. So got to... Got to be uh, positive if you're Eric Bakic here. Good experience for your team uh, a little bit later in the Big Ten schedule. Brito will remain on the mound for Rutgers. Now we're going to be the final line on Chriswell as Weiss finished off the eighth inning. Chriswell's final line, seven and two-thirds innings pitched. Three hits, one run it was earned. Walked two, struck out three. Didn't commit any hit batsmen, box, wild pitches. Faced 27 batters the lineup three times in what was a great outing for Chriswell. For Michigan, it's Donovan, Nelson, and Lewis here scheduled in the bottom of the ninth. Donovan 0 for 3 in the ball game today. First pitch hack fouled off the press box here and bounces down near the stands. Or into the stands, rather. The count is 0 and 1. Some hopeful dogs looking longingly <laughs> at the ball as it rolls by them. Ended up in the hands of a nice little kid over there. Works out nicely. Big grin on his face. Was it got a little toy bat to go along with it? Perfect. 0-1 pitch now to Donovan. Misses off the plate low and away. Count is 1-1. Donovan ground out to third. Strikeout and a fly out to center field in this one today. As you mentioned yesterday, big three-run homer for Donovan, though. 1-1 one, one pitch. Off the plate, outside, and low. Yet again, it's 2-1 and one now. There is action in the Rutgers bullpen, but there really has been for a couple innings, and they keep riding with Serafino Brito, their closer. And not a ton of great options in the Rutgers bullpen for them to go to, but it is an interesting move of them to leave Brito out here when they got so much length from their starter. Might as well... 2-1 pitch, called strike at the knees. Called strike. As uh, they have more of their bullpen to go to, might as well do so in a closer game. But for whatever reason, Rutgers and head coach Joe Letary are elected not to do so. Brito wasn't used in either of the first two games of this series. Ground ball towards third, backhand, or back towards short, rather, backhand over there by Welsh. She makes the play to first base with a strong throw from the hole for out number one. And Donovan was hustling, but just not able to beat it out on the strong throw from Welsh. Uh, some really great uh, play by Welsh at the shortstop position today. Donovan is not slow, per se, but not the fastest runner on the Wolverine team. If it was someone, say, Wogu, or a healthy Franklin, or a K.O. Thomas running, maybe a chance to beat that one out, but... Welsh went into the hole and made a great throw from deep in the hole between third and short. Blake Nelson comes to the plate now, the only man to face Brito twice now. First pitch to him is on the outside corner for a strike 0 and 1. Nelson's 0 for 3 on the day. Strikeout and a flyout against the starter Murray. And a ground out against Brito. Brito looks at McNamara behind the plate, takes a breath now, the 0-1 pitch. 
This one's misses low and away and skips past back to the backstop. Count will even itself up at one ball and one strike. And just getting on here, uh, Nelson would really be helping Michigan's chances for a win, especially with the most productive section of the batting order coming up at behind him as the bottom of the order has really been the best today. Fouled off to the right side there on 1-1 one, one and into the parking lot. I just saw one kid sprint through the tunnel there. Did you yeah, catch that? <laughs> I, I did. I've, I've been seeing some fans eagerly run into the tunnel trying to catch foul balls in the parking lot. I'm not sure what the appeal of that is, but <laughs> I guess everyone wants a souvenir. I mean, I'm up here saying I want one from the press box. That's so, true. I mean, <laughs> we don't have quite the same opportunity to run yeah, into the parking lot. Yeah, not quite. I mean, it could. <laughs> one, two pitch. Misses high. It's two and two. Blake Nelson on the season. One home run that came last weekend, his first of the year. But one of the higher average and on-base percentage on the team. We just needs to get on base here. He grounds a two-hopper. Sliding play in the hole by Welsh again. He makes a strong throw to first, but this one's going to be offline and late. Welsh trying to pull some magic yet again, but Nelson gets on base here in the bottom of the ninth, representing the winning run. Once again, a hustle play by Michigan trying to beat out the ball in the hole that Welsh is playing. But Welsh, this time, not able to make the play, uh, even though he made a great sliding uh, st sliding stop of the ball, wasn't able to make the throw, coming up and spinning as he threw. And uh, just the ball was a little bit offline. So good play by Nelson to hustle there. And uh, Welsh, again, displaying stellar skills at shortstop, even though not, he's not able to make the throw in time. I'm very impressed that shorts by Welsh today, Kevin Welsh. Miles Lewis now steps up to the plate for the Wolverines. He lines one through the hole on the right side, base hit. Stopping for a second to make th sure it got through was Nelson, so he'll only go to second. That puts the winning run in scoring position now for Michigan. And a little bit of a hesitation there by Nelson. He probably could have gotten to third if he had read that ball better. He, uh, he kind of faked a steal, stopped, and then started to move back towards first, not realizing that the ball was hit through the hole. And he probably could have just continued on running. Well, the um, fake steal really sold it against Soto, the second baseman, who was moving towards second. And that's really the reason the hole was so big. Yeah. I think that kind of... Probably a different look for him. I think that shocked Nelson. He's thinking that the second baseman, Soto, would have maybe had a play on that ball, but... Soto is well away from yeah, where that ball ended up going through. It's a good observation. Probably a smart play by Nelson then to just play it safe and, and stay in scoring position. Okay, o. Thomas now stepping to the plate. The senior with a big opportunity here. First pitch to him, breaking ball strike. Counts 0-1. Thomas is 1-2 for two today. Singled back in the third. Not a bit of a fluky play. And it has grounded out and walked. Nelson representing the winning run at second. Lewis over there on first. Burrito comes set. Both Welsh and Soto, the second baseman and shortstop, kind of shaded off near that second base bag, acting like they were going to try to run a pickoff play when Burrito just spun back there. Nelson slid back in, but no one was there to cover. Tight up the middle, though, is that middle infield double play depth. Corners playing back. A one pitch. Breaking ball. Check swing. He went around. Did Thomas on a ball in the dirt. And the count's 0-2. Thomas adjusts his glove now. Down the count 0-2. Very adept at staying in counts. Has Akeo Thomas been throughout his career. And even this year when he's struggling... That's a nice try, but not striking out too much. Puts the ball in play, stays alive. It's going to have to do so here. 0-2. Oh, Check swing on a ball. Call! Strike three on the outside corner. And Cadden pausing to make that call, staring at the, at, at the uh, pitch being framed by McNamara. And once again, kind of stealing a strike by framing it well. It was a close play on the outside part of the plate to the right-hander Thomas, but... Uh, and some fans took exception with it. I don't know about that one, uh, if that was close or not. To be a strike, it seemed like it probably was a strike, but a borderline for sure. Now Jordan Wogu will be the man that Michigan 
turns to to try to win this ball game here in the bottom of the ninth. We'll do 0 for 2 on the day. Started off his day with two walks and a sense lined out and struck out looking. First pitch here, this at bat, breaking ball called, strike on the inside corner. Fans not agreeing with that one. Yeah, after the <laughs> close close call on the outside part of the plate earlier to Thomas, and now this inside pitch to the righty Wogu. Fans taking exception with Cadence umpiring. Both looked good from here, personally. Checking the runner now at second is Brito. Fires no one pitch, swinging and a miss on the fastball that was moving away, it looked like from Wogu, maybe a bit like a cutter. And the count now 0-2. Big moment here for Brito on the mound in what is most likely his last inning given how long he's been in this ball game. This upcoming pitch will be pitch number 52 for him, but no action in the Rutgers bullpen right now. This is his inning pretty much to finish off. He can do so right here on 0-2. Here it comes. Hit in the air by Wogu, deep to center field, going back but having plenty of room is the center fielder Valderrama, and he makes the grab for out number three here in the bottom of the ninth. So we got some bonus baseball for you. We're ahead of the 10th inning after Michigan does not score on two hits. No errors that inning, and they leave two runners on base. On our way to the 10th inning, we're tied up here. Rutgers and Michigan, 1-1. One to one. And nice job by Wogu putting some drive into the ball, even though he was down 0-2, just not quite enough, and Valderrama making an easy play out in center field. And have to wonder when Michigan's going to be able to break through here. Even the most productive part of the order, at least uh, today, uh, was not able to come through in the bottom of that ninth inning. So maybe as they get further into this Rutgers bullpen, they'll have a little bit more success. For Michigan, they will turn to Ben Kaiser to start things in extra innings for him. Kaiser so far on the season has made 18 appearances, including a start. He's recorded a save in there. He's a 2-0 record with a 2.62 ERA on the season. He's pitched 24 innings, struck out 24 batters in that. Only six walks and a batter's hit just 181 against the left-hander for the Wolverines. Kaiser the redshirt junior out of Portage, Michigan. One of the more trusted arms for head coach Eric Backich. And he doesn't allow many runners. A whip of only point of only 875 this year. And allowing the leadoff man on at only a 190 clip. So definitely a, a pretty lockdown option for Backage as he tries to keep it, keep put up a zero in this half inning and allow Michigan another chance to win the game. Final line on Willie Weiss. He pitched an inning and a third of work. No hits, no runs. Three walks, three strikeouts. And he did fire a wild pitch in there as well amongst the seven batters he faced. So starting off extra innings for us here is going to be Kevin Blum, the right fielder for Rutgers. Blum, one for two on the day. He got on base with a walk back in the third and doubled in the eighth inning. Tries to lay down a bunt here and bunts it foul behind the plate. A count is 0-1. Trying to put it on the first base side away from where the lefty Kaiser falls off the mound. Was Blum there just trying to get things started here in extra innings. Not a bad idea. Yeah, not a bad idea at all to get on base for your uh, nine-hole hitter who's probably going to just end up bunting you to second anyway because considering his low average on the season. 0-1 pitch. Hit high in the air towards the right side. Kerr's giving chase near that sidewall. Does he have room? He did have room, but he misjudged it. It went right over his head. Kerr not happy with it as he tosses it back to Kaiser, but the count is 0-2. And, and there may have been a late gust that kind of adjusted that ball there. It looked to me as I was staring at it that it was going to fall out of play, and then it seemed to kind of surprise Kerr. Looked like Kerr was kind of worried about the sidewall, get to the sidewall first and then adjust. And he got to the sidewall and then could just didn't quite have enough time to adjust to that one. Nice bunch of, it's, a, it's a slanted wall, so it's a little bit harder to judge exactly where it's going to go out of play. 0-2 pitch popped out. This one will get out of play foul. And the count will remain 0-2. Yeah, it must be difficult as as a first place as a first baseman ranging to their to their left to make that play. It's got to be tough to know where the wall is, considering how 
how drastically the width from the first baseline to the wall uh, changes based on where on the first baseline uh, you are. Blum staying alive here, ready for another 0-2 from Kaiser. Here it comes. Fastball misses well away. It's 1-2. and two. Blum, the redshirt junior out of Toms River, New Jersey. Stands there 6'1", 190. Crouched over a little bit in that right-handed batter's box and dances out of the way of one that almost hits him in the knees. The count runs to two and two. Michigan's infield is shifted towards the left. Nelson is hugging the line basically at third. Blomgren playing a little bit deeper. Akeo Thomas playing near the second base bag. And Kerr well off the line at first. 2-2 two -two pitch. It's the bouncer towards that left side. Blomgren backhands in the hole. Throws to first. In time. Blum tried to slide in there, but didn't make a difference. That's out number one. Once again, Rucker is trying to get on by sliding at first. Interesting strategy and not paying off so far. I'm not sure it ever will. He also <laughs> slid kind of late there. It looked like the bag hit him right in the stomach as he was coming down almost. I might have... Might have been looking too late, but it seemed like it was a late slide. It did look like he made the decision very late to slide. David Soto comes up to the plate now. The nine-hole hitter for Rutgers takes a first pitch. That misses just high, I think. And the count is 1-0. Oh. Kaiser pitches exclusively from the stretch. 1-0 oh pitch. This one's a hard hit grounder out the middle. Blomgren makes the play, spins around the second base bag, fires to first, and gets him by a half a step. Nice. Two great plays by Blomgren to nail the runners, having to move around the hole at short and just make a strong throw to get hit and nail the runner. I was a little worried there he wasn't going to make that play. Looked like he double tapped the ball inside of his, in the palm of his glove, but didn't matter as he made a strong enough throw to first. Two outs here in the top of the 10th inning. I'll go back to the top of the Rutgers order for Mike Neister. Kaiser's first time facing Neister today. So this is his first inning of work. He plunks him on the foot. Hit by a pitch from Neister. He's going to be on base with two gone here in the 10th. And Neister didn't really make much of an effort to get out of the way of that one. So it uh, seems like they may just be... Uh, counting the base runner as a blessing and just taking the base, wanting to get on in whatever way they can. Especially a guy with nice, like Neister that has speed. Easily leads Rutgers in both stolen bases and attempts. He's 11 for 12 this season. A little bit harder with the lefty Kaiser on the mound to go. He's not going here. It's, it'll be Kevin Welsh following one back behind the plate here and out of play. Count is 0-1. Welsh had a stellar day in the field so far. Not as stellar at the plate. He's unfortunately taken some good swings, but flew out to each of the three outfield spots and also struck out looking. That was the big strikeout by Willie Weiss to end the threat in the eighth with the bases loaded. His 0-1 pitch is called strike on the inside corner there right at the knees. Good spot from Kaiser. He's ahead in the count 0-2. And a good job of, by Kaiser of getting these Rutgers hitters to, to chase up and away a little bit. A lot of these balls are being fouled off to the right. Oh, two pitches hit towards right field. Miles Lewis has plenty of room over there as he runs in, loses the cap in true Miles Lewis fashion, and makes the grab for out number three. So Rutgers there in the top of the ninth. No runs, no hits, no errors. They leave one man on base. We'll head to the bottom of the 10th. Michigan has another chance to win it. They just need to score one. We're tied up one to one in extras between Rutgers and Michigan. You're listening to WCBN Sports Broadcast. We are the official student radio broadcast for Michigan baseball. We appreciate you tuning in to today's ball game and our ball games all weekend and all season long. For Michigan, two, three, and four hitters do up. This is pretty much the time for Michigan over the next couple innings should we go longer that you'd pinpoint them to score most likely. And with Brito staying in, you got to wonder if he's starting to get a little more tired and possibly if uh, 
the innings of work are wearing on him enough for Michigan to break through here, especially with the top of their order coming up, or near the top of their order, rather, with Franklin leading off. Yeah, Brito has pitched three innings so far. Has not given up a run, just a couple hits, three walks, two strikeouts this far for him. No action right now in the Rutgers bullpen. This game pretty much belongs to the senior from Oakland, New Jersey. Jesse Franklin, Jordan Brewer, Jimmy Kerr, three guys that all have the ability to end this ballgame on one swing, all due up for Michigan in this inning. The top three on the team in home runs. Also top three on the team in RBIs. It's exactly a little string of hitters you want coming up. Absolutely, you want your most, your most production, the place where you most need the production right now. That's for sure. Jesse Franklin makes his way to the plate. He is 0 for 2 on the day with a strikeout and a fielder's choice, but has reached twice on walks. Michigan has stranded nine base runners today. After that one in the top of the 10th, Rutgers are stranded seven. And really the story of the game. Good outings from pitchers and stranding runners. Jesse Franklin takes a first pitch from Brito outside for a ball 1-0. Next pitch to Franklin misses low again. It's 2-0 and now. So the second time Franklin faces Brito. He hit a sharp grounder to shortstop. That was then taken to the bag by Welsh himself and his only outing or only other time seeing Brito. 2-0 pitch. This one is fouled back over our heads off to the left side and out of play. And a good patient approach by Franklin here not making any poor decisions early in the count, especially when he's trying to get on to set up the winning run. And as Michigan as Michigan hitters start to see Brito for the second time around, it'll be interesting to see how they incorporate what they know about him to probably try and to try and break through here. Two on pitch. High fastball, three and one. In firm control, the count of Jesse Franklin always seems to be in control up there, is Frank, does Franklin. Very patient hitter, more walks than strikeouts on the year. And it's padded that a little bit today with two walks to the one strikeout. Heading the count here, three and one. Burrito's ready, come set, and the pitch. Hit high in the air towards left center field. Ranging over there is the center fielder, Valderrama. He's got room and makes the grab for out number one. And a better effort by Franklin there than his first time up against Brito. But still no different result as it just results in an out for Michigan despite a better charge, a better drive being put on the ball out to left center field. Jordan Brewer will get his shot against Brito, a second shot against Brito. First time he hit one onto the track in deep center field. Almost gave Michigan the lead in the bottom of the eighth. Looking to give them the lead and the win here in the bottom of the tenth. First pitch, fastball, a little bit high, maybe a bit outside as well. It's 1-0. Overall in the day, Brewer is 1-4. for four. His one was an RBI double back in the third, driving the only Michigan run of the day. Brito gets his sign from McNamara. Comes set. 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss there from Brewer. Good pitch from Brito. And you can tell Brewer wants to end this game. He is swinging with a ferocity that we have not, we did not see earlier. Just really trying to make contact and end this thing. Looked like a some sort of off-speed pitch there for Brewer. Didn't look like the big breaking ball. Almost more of a changeup that had Brewer out in front taking that big hack. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss. He blew away with the fastball that time, and it's 1-2. and two. Good job of changing speeds by Brito after he had Brewer out in front of the off speed. Comes back with that fastball, and Brewer was late on that one. Would be a fitting end, though, if Brewer was able to get a hold of one. Homer in all three 
games this weekend in his return to the lineup after injuring himself a couple weekends ago against Ohio State. Took a ball to the face. It's a one-two pitch missed outside. It's two and two. And despite taking two really healthy cuts at these at, uh, these, at these pitches from Brito, also some two really good takes. Brewer doesn't take a ton of walks, but more than content to wait for his pitch. See if Brito gives it to him, 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball misses, look low and away. Another good take, just as you mentioned. Yeah, and all three come in in almost the same spot, just out, up and outside a little bit. A couple different pitches through more of a fastball that missed on one and two, and then on that 2-2 two -two pitch, that breaking ball that looked very enticing out of the hand. Brewer just kind of spat on it there, and we're full, three and two. Payoff pitch. Hit high in the air, back behind the plate. This one will get out of play, and... Probably bounce off the press box there. There it is. <laughs> and now the count will remain three and two. And as some fans look up behind themselves, <laughs> anticipatingly for the ball to roll off the press box, I don't think it's coming. I think it. I think it was hit with enough uh, directional velocity to get out back behind us. Yeah. We're ready for another three-two pitch, though. Here it comes. Ground ball, that's gonna get up the middle for a base hit. One out single here on the 10th for Jordan Brewer. Michigan finds themselves in the same situation they did in the ninth with a chance to get this inning going with a one out single. That's a great at bat by Brewer. Waiting for the right pitch and uh, driving a ball up the middle through the hole. Uh, just a good approach and now he's on base and don't be surprised if he steals as he's Stolen 12 of, six of the 16 bags he's tried to steal this, this uh, season. I would not be surprised to see him be aggressive. Jimmy Kerr at the plate for Michigan. Kerr 0 for 3 on the day. A couple of flyouts and a strikeout. Did reach on a walk in the 8th, though. He was quickly erased on a double play. Brewer was chased back to the bag with a pickoff throw. So, Brito, thinking the same way you were. Brewer comes set, the pitch. Misses low and away for a ball, 1-0. Oh. And it may be having an effect as to paying attention to Brewer at first could be uh, making it a little bit tougher for Brito to concentrate here. Brito's gone to three ball counts on each of the first two batters of this inning. And it's down 1-0 oh here to Jimmy Kerr. Big lead from Brewer at first. Brito tosses over. Looks like Brito was either going to stand there and hold until Kerr called time at the plate, or he was going to do exactly what he just there and had to jump off the mound and do a half-hearted toss over to keep Brewer close. Another big lead from Brewer at first base. Not going as Kerr fouls went off to the left side. That'll get up out of play. And the count will remain one and or will move to one and one. Jimmy Kerr, after his 0 for 3 day today, his average sitting at 273 on base percentage, still up to 366, though. Another pickoff throw. Brewers back in diving without a tag. At this point, it's not even really trying to pick off Brewer. It's just keeping him close. They do not want him either stealing or getting a good jump on a ball that's hit into the outfield. Big lead again from Brewer. Twitches a couple times, and a throw over. Bounces off him. Gets away just a few feet from Brito at first base. Brito to Brito there, the pickoff throw. Brewer needs to take a second. Not sure where it got him, but he's shaking up a bit. You have the feeling that Brewer is going to go at some point in this at bat, and just about everybody knows it, chiefly Serafino Brito. Big lead again from Brewer. Checks the runner, comes set, not going. And almost a pitch out there, high and away. Thinking a lot about Brewer there are the Scarlet Knights, and it's 2-1 and one now on Kerr. 
Not sure that was a design pitch out or if it just ended up looking like one as McNamara had to pop out of his stance to catch that ball. Have to imagine that wasn't intentional. Checks the runner again. Brewer leaning back towards first. Now jabs towards second once. And the 2 1 pitch is going to be tapped over near the Michigan dugout. It's 2 and 2 now on Kerr. Most of the fans have stuck around today. I'd say of the crowd we started with, probably about 70 to 80 percent still here. Yeah, I think that's fair. Probably about that amount. Probably about the same on the dog count as well. The most important fans, obviously. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Brewers moving. Swing and miss by Kerr. Throw it on to second is late and high. Brewers swipes second, but Kerr is very upset with the strikeout at the plate. There's two gone in the 10th. Yeah, and Kerr's strikeout means there's two outs now, and at least there's a runner in scoring position for Blomgren. Good chance for Michigan to end it here. But ultimately, the uh, Brewer was able to reach on the high throw by McNamara, which was just out of the range of the uh, second baseman trying to make the tag. So Jack Blomgren with the chance to win it. Winning runs out there on second base. Blomgren trying to reverse his fortunes today. He's 0 for 4, a strikeout. Uh, he subsequently grounded a shortstop three times, two of which were standard 6 to 3 ground outs. The other one. An inning ending 6 4 3 double play on a stellar play by Welsh in the eighth. First pitch of SF at is a breaking ball that misses high to Blomgren. It's 1 0. This would be a huge walk off single for the sophomore if he can find a hole somewhere. Rutgers playing very deep across the infield, trying to give themselves plenty of time to have plenty of range. Outfield playing in to try to cut down Brewer at home should a base hit happen. And this one, it comes in, up, up and in, and hits Blomgren right on the shoulder. And that one was especially close to his head. I was worried for a moment there that he had been hit in the head, but the reaction just not at all ind indicative of that. And so, yeah, it seems it hit him on the shoulder, and he took it, took it well, and now he's standing at first. So Joe... Joe Donovan coming up to hit, and he's been patient in his first few at-bats today. And it's up to Joe Donovan now. Two outs, winning run on second. Same situation as Blomgren. Only difference is now there's a force out at second base and third base. Donovan 0 for 4 on the day. A couple of ground outs, fly out, strike out. Takes the first pitch outside for a ball, 1-0. and He mentioned a patient today. He's run the count full twice and had a 2-2 two and two count, and there's as well. Not afraid to wait out his pitch. Brito looks in. He's shuffling that ball around in his right hand as he gets his sign. Now checks Brewer at second. 1-0 pitch. Foul straight back to the screen by Donovan. He was on it. But the count's 1-1. And the decision to leave Brito and could be the decision of the game depending on the outcome of this at bat. Brito. Interesting he's been given so much run by Rutgers head coach uh, of course Joe Letario. Donovan loose in that right handed batter's box. Puts that bat in front of him. Now waggles it back up over his shoulder and awaits a 1-1 pitch. Brewer, huge secondary lead at second base. And the 1-1 pitch misses high and away. Ball two. Brewer's secondary lead is almost halfway to third. They are not holding him on very well at second. Yeah, he's taking what's given to him by the Rutgers defense right now. and No reason not to get as far off second as possible and try and score on a base hit. Taking that lead out there is Brewer now. Checking him as Brito, 2-1 pitch. Just missed low, it's 3-1. And, and you'd love to get this going to your 339 hitter on deck, Blake Nelson. Should Donovan not be able to get the job done. He's ahead in the count, 3-1 here. you got to figure he's looking for his pitch, something he could hit hard somewhere and hopefully find a hole. Brito set. 
Three one pitch. Line straight back to the backstop again. Two good swings from Donovan this at bat. Both fouled straight back to the screen. And that one might have been a bit high, but it was right over the heart of the plate. Seemed like a good pitch to swing at. And no reason not to when you're I suppose hitting well, he's hitting two fifty five. But Puts that bat straight out in front of him as he waits for Brito to come set. Now winds it up a couple times. Big pitch upcoming here. 3-2, two, two outs. Runners going to be on the move. A base hit will end it. Come set. 3-2. Foul off. Back behind the plate. Out of play. Count remains 3-2. and two. That with running start with a, a full count and two outs is going to be huge for the lead runner at second, Jordan Brewer, especially if the Base hit is hitting the outfield in front of one of the outfielders. Uh, the running start may be a difference in whether he's able to get home safe or not. And the speed of Jordan Brewer also. The outfield still playing in despite, as she said, because of that running start, they're really not going to have a chance on any base hit. Infield for Rucker still playing back, trying to stop anything from getting to the outfield. Brito set. Another 3-2 pitch. Foul back in the exact same spot almost behind us and the count still three and two and Donovan if, and if Brito walks Donovan here you'd have to imagine that Rutgers will head to the bullpen as someone warming up and uh, the bases will be loaded with two outs it has been Brito's game pretty much so far since he came into the ball game. He's in his fourth inning of work. I said a long at bat though. It's be pitch number eight upcoming. His 79th pitch of the day. That's a season high for him. He has gone longer before. So 3-2 pitch on the way again. Fouled back to the screen again. And the dugout in loving it. Yeah. Dugout and fans appreciating Donovan's Persistence. Then I'm going to step back in after briefly heading over to the dugout. Ready for another 3 2 pitch. Got some new balls brought to the umpire as well as Donovan keeps getting rid of them. Stares out at Brito. Brito stares into his catcher, McNamara, for the sign. He gets it. Come set. Payoff pitch again. Hit high in the air, deep left field. This one's going back near the track, near the wall. That ball is gone! Three-run walk-off home run, Joe Donovan! Michigan wins! Four to one! And Donovan what? celebrating with the team as he gets poured on with a Gatorade. Two Gatorade coolers, bunch of water bottles. The field's a mess now, but Everyone's going home happy thanks to Joe Donovan. And what a great pitch to hit. He just outlasted Brito, who had been in there for having to work three and two thirds. And what a long at bat. Just kept fighting off pitches and fighting off pitches and eventually got one to hit, driving it well to, le to deep left center to end this game. Came on pitch number nine of the at bat. And Joe Donovan, the hero today in this one, as Michigan completes the sweep of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They move to 31 and 11 overall, 11 and three, and still sit atop the Big Ten standings. Rutgers drops to 17 and 24. They drop to seven and eight in the Big Ten. Final line score, Rutgers one run on three hits, one error. Michigan, those four runs on seven hits, none bigger than the three run walk off, and one error for the Wolverines as well. Winning pitcher on the day is gonna be Benjamin Kaiser. He will move to three and zero. Oh. Serafino Brito takes the loss. He moves to two and three. And wow, what a ball game! What a way to end it. Absolutely, Michigan baseball showing they can get it done in every single way. Blowing out Rutgers two games and then coming back with a tight one today in a pitcher's duel. Jeff Criswell really showing that he's no three starter. He's really just a good starter for Michigan, and uh, they're they're deep everywhere essentially. So good signs for Michigan baseball all around. We saw Donovan being staying patient the entire game and working deep in the counts, and he 
follows up a three-run homer yesterday with a walk-off three-run homer today. Uh, so Chriswell and Donovan, the story of the game for Michigan, really. Chriswell and Donovan do it for the Wolverines, and that's going to do it for us here at Ray Fisher Stadium for today and for this weekend. Once again, Michigan completes the sweep, a 4-1 win, courtesy of a three-run walk-off home run by Joe Donovan. I have been Austin Falco, alongside Owen Swanson. All of us here at WCBN Sports, thank you for listening in today and all weekend long, and we're going to leave you, as we always do, with a good night and a go blue.